Until the day with the dawn ringing in my ears Oh well, I turn to my TV show No better way, I gotta get myself into gear Let's go, oh And I feel good today With my wake up in the morning espresso I feel good today It's my feel good breakfast show Good morning to you. This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso on S3. Can you believe it? We are already saying hello to Thursday. This week is flying by and today's show is all about the kids and Ryle will be broadcasting live from Weinberg Boys High School. Now we are certainly in for a cultural treat from getting a backstage pass to their production Little Shop of Horrors to a front row seat to their performances from their vocal ensemble. And then we will also be catching up with the first team rugby players and I will here in studio get a lesson or two on what rugby players workouts look like i've always wanted to know so today i get my chance at trying hopefully we won't skip leg day that's all i'm gonna say but it's time for us to also say good morning and connect with you and thank you for joining us today good morning graham Good morning. I'm really looking forward to that rugby workout because I'm not doing it this morning. Zoe, you've got this. Absolutely love the theme for today's show. I um, have a, an emotional connection with Weinberg Boys. have covered some really cool events at the school, seen their rugby teams do some amazing things, punch so far above their um, weight class. So I'm all about the vibe at that school. And it paints a beautiful picture this morning of what we want to talk to you about. What was your favorite extramural activity at school? Was it rugby? Was it a sport? Was it the arts? Was it debating? Was it the house plays? Was it putting on amazing musical productions like the Little Shop of Horrors? We want to know from you guys this morning what got you most excited about going to school because let's be honest it probably wasn't for most of us the schoolwork but the social element the opportunity to connect with friends and do something really meaningful and awesome. So that's what we'd love to hear from you this morning. Drop us a voice note on our WhatsApp line 063-408-8863. What was your favorite extramural activity at school? I'm going to ask Zoe not to reveal it. In fact, you can start guessing and for the next three hours we'll see if you hit the money. What was Zoe's favorite extramural activity at school? We're going to find out over the next three hours. But first, let's kickstart the day with those news headlines. Oh, and there were many, G-Man. <laughs> There were many. Well, let's quickly look at your national headlines. Transnet has reported a net profit of 5 billion rand for the 2021-2022 financial year, despite ongoing operational issues. The beleaguered state-owned ports and railway company had posted an 8.7 billion rand loss for the previous financial year. Full year revenue was up 1.8% at 68.5 billion rand for the year ended 31 March 2022. Transnet also received an unqualified audit report for the first time since 2018. South Africa's ports have been rated as some of the worst performing in the world, while its railway lines also have much to be desired. And staying with local news, KwaZulu-Natal police are investigating whether the suspects in yesterday morning's high-speed ch chase on the N2 in the vicinity of the King Shaka International Airport in Durban are linked to other crimes. Five suspects died after a shootout between police officers and private security company members. Police say they had earlier broken into a mall in Impangeni before fleeing, flee fleeing the scene. Now, spokesperson Jay Nyker said two other suspects were transported to hospital with serious injuries. Moving to news abroad, miners in northeast Angola have discovered a rare pure pink diamond believed to be the largest rough diamond of its kind to be unearthed in 300 years. The Australian site operator named the 170 carat stone the Lulo Rose. The diamond will be sold on international tender by the Angolan State Diamond Marketing Company. This find continues to showcase Angola as an important player on the world stage for diamond mining and that is a quote from the minerals resources minister. Now, the pink star, a 59-carat pink diamond, sold for $71.2 million in 2017, the most expensive ever. 
And staying with news abroad, gas prices have soared after Russia further cut gas supplies to Germany and other Central European countries. European gas prices rose by almost 2%, trading close to the record high set after Russia invaded Ukraine. Critics have accused Russia of using gas as a political weapon. Russia has been cutting flows through the Nord Stream 1 pipeline to Germany. It now operates at less than a fifth of its normal capacity. Meanwhile, Ukraine says work has started at three ports aimed at forming green corridors to allow grain exports. Bringing it back home, Banyana Banyana's magnificent victory in Rabat beating Morocco to bag the Women's Soccer Africa Cup is still fresh in our memory. But already there are living and lively discussions on how our national netball team, the African champions, is going to fare at the 16th Netball World Cup tournament in Cape Town from the 28th of July to the 6th of August next year. Our hopes for this exciting event have been boosted by a 33 by 9 meter mural at the Langa Indoor Sports Center near Cape Town International Airport. The first of several that the mother city is planning to commission over the next 12 months to mark 365 days to the Netball World Cup. The imposing artwork by local artist Skumbuzo Salman and supported by emerging artists Ayabonga and Songwana is visible from the N2 highway. Cape Town Mayor Jordan Hill Lewis said preparations are in full swing to ensure netball facilities in Scottsdean, Ravensmead, Delft, Guguletu, Sir Lowry's Pass, Strandfontein, Sarepta and Mitchell's Plain have already been upgraded at a cost of some 6 million rand. He added Added, and I quote, who knows, hopefully we'll see our Nepal team become world champions on home soil. We certainly hope so. And the best person to keep you up to date with that is Graham Richards and he's here with your first look at your sport. Sorry, Zoe, not the best note to start on this morning as we kick off with crickets. And it was Johnny Bairstow's 90 from just 53 balls, as well as a quick fire 52 from just 18 deliveries from Moen Ali that were the catalyst for the, <clears throat> excuse me, 41 run victory for England in their first T20 against South Africa yesterday. The hosts posting a massive 234 for six, thanks to those two knocks, but the Proteas left to ruse some shoddy fielding, dropping no less than five catches in the process. Lungi and Gidi did shine with the ball though the pick of the bowlers for South Africa taking five for 39 in response a brilliant knock of 72 of just 28 from Tristan Stubbs and then a 57 from Risa Hendricks were just not enough for the visitors as Richard Gleeson he took three for 51 and ultimately confirmed that victory and that second T20 takes place in Cardiff later tonight then on to Commonwealth Games news and again not the best with the Commonwealth Games opening ceremony taking place tonight team South Africa have been forced into a number Number of changes across a number of codes. So Trisha Chetty, she misses the games through injury, adding to the loss already of Marazan Cup due to personal reasons. Then Olympian and Tour de France rider Nick Lamini, he misses out through injury with Callum Ormiston now replacing him on the bike. Then para-athlete Ernst van Dijk, a titan in the game, is out injured, and that he'll be ably replaced in the para-marathon by Tian Bosch, while triathletes Nicholas Quenet, who's injured, will also be an absentee. And then 200-meter sprinter Luke Tolo Adams has also been withdrawn from the games due to fatigue. And on to footballing news. Let's see if we can bring some clarity to a story that has built in momentum over the week. So SAPA president Dr. Danny Yodan has clarified the issues of bonuses for Banyana Banyana and also what will happen with the prize money awarded by CAF. So the prize money of 8.4 million rand will be paid to SAFA and many assumed it would be then added to the 9.2 million in bonuses promised by SAFA to the team. However, that is not actually the case. So speaking to Robert Marawa on Marawa Sports Worldwide, Jordan explained that while Banyana are guaranteed a bonus of 400,000 Rand from SAFA, the Football Association will receive the prize money from CAF, and that money will then go into the budget for the bonuses, expenses, and more. At the same time, President Cyril Ramaphosa has said that the team deserve to be paid as much as their male counterparts. Let's see if that will actually happen. Then on to more controversy in sports. 
sports. But I think this is now gaining a legion of fans. The 2023 Live Golf schedule will not complete uh, compete with the majors. This has now been put out. International team events as heritage events, say event organisers. Bold move and a clever one at that. Next year, 48 players will play in 14 tournaments with $405 million in combined purses. Incredible. With a choice of playing in the more traditional tournaments as well. The announcement comes as the third tournament of the Breakaway Series gets underway today. The event in New Jersey is one of eight tournaments in the inaugural year of what has proved to be quite a controversial new series. Well, we promised a lot of sport today and it's going to come in the form of the Weinberg Boys Rugby team. We'll connect with them a little bit later. More rugby-inspired workouts and, of course, a lot of more inspiration. But uh, let's see what the weather has in store for you on this Thursday morning. Thanks, Graham. Well, let's start off with your weather. We're going to kick off with this morning's with some truly unsettling news for the environment and conservation in general. And this is from the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Despite growing pleas from climate change activists, the DRC says it's moving forward with plans to auction off a vast majority of oil and gas drilling blocks located in the country's rainforest and peatland. Now, the Ministry of Hydrocarbon said 27 oil and three gas blocks would be auctioned, an increase from the 16 blocks the country initially committed to in May. The blocks include areas that reach into the Virunga National Park, a sanctuary for endangered mountains and gorillas in the, in the east of the Congo. The DRC has more than 27 million people, including some 3 million children, who do not have enough food to feed themselves. A petition signed by more than 100,000 people is calling on President Felix Tshisekedi of the DRC to end the development of new oil and gas fields in the country. Well, moving from environmental news to your sunrise views, let's start this morning off with one that got sent in from Yuzhan. Look at this early morning rainbow all the way from Kabecha. And then we also have one sent in from Diane. Look at how the color of the morning sky is reflecting across the water out in Hawick and KwaZulu-Natal. Ivana sent us this cloudy sky filled with colors from the Kericha. And then Kumbulani sent us this lovely clear photo of the sky in Johannesburg on his way to work. Finally, we got this one from Mersha. She sent it on the WhatsApp line with the street lights in the distance as the sky slowly begins to light up its surroundings. And if you would love to be part of that list of sunrise views, WhatsApp us your good morning photo. That number is 063-408-8863. Let's get into your temperatures for today. In Polokwane, your low is 6, your high 21. Mbumbela sunny with a low of 9, a high of 23. Pretoria 822, Johannesburg 7 with a high of 20, Mahiking 10, 23, Klagsdorp 8 with a high of 21, Kimberley 11, 24, Bloemfontein 6, 21, Richards Bay 15 with a high of 23, partly cloudy conditions in Peter Maritzburg 11 with a high of 23, Durban 16, 23, Mtata 11, 19, East London 17, 23, partly cloudy in Cranston. Radok, 8 your low, 22 your high. Kabecha, 13 with a high of 21. Moving to the Western Cape, George, 9, 21. Cape Town, 12, 21. Worcester, 4, 20. Uh, in fact, Worcester, your low is 7, your high, 24. Sutherland, 0 with a high of 17. And Uppington, expect a beautiful sunny day with a low of 9 and a high of 29 degrees Celsius. Well, that's your weather for now. We'll have another update shortly after. To seven. And then this guy stepped into studio. He is ready. We're talking about cool extramural activities for kids throughout the show today. Maybe yours is in the techie zone. What are you going to introduce to us in a second? We've got a bunch of kids tech or tech for kids. And I think parents, you're going to want to stay tuned for this. Mm, it's going to be awesome. We'll start up the conversation on the other side of this. Nourish your skin with Ingram's for men. Enriched with triple glycerine for 48 hour moisture and no stickiness. New look Ingram's. Your skin, your brave. Introducing new Ingram sensitive range to gently nourish skin.
of course, throughout the morning, Riley's going to be joining the boys from Weinberg Boys High School. It's only fitting that we focus on the young'uns right now. We're connecting with our tech expert, Grant Hines, to chat about some tech that's friendly for kids and parents really need to sit up and take notice of this. I yeah, think. I, was, I was actually really interested because when I was doing the research for this, I didn't know half of these things existed. And if you've got kids, there are great ways to introduce your kids to technology without putting the techno fear that you might have yeah, in your you're kids. You're not exposing them to the, the great wide digital world. You're just giving them opportunity to learn and cross that digital divide. Yeah, and tools right. for yourself. Because the first one that I actually want to chat about is a smartwatch for kids. Okay. But what's special about the smartwatch is that it's got uh, a built-in camera, it's got a 3G card, but you can't can't make calls out of it unless it's the one number that you've associated uh, okay, with it. So your so you, SOS number. So, you're, that so is. your kid okay. can call you. It's got an intercom system so that you can literally uh, intercom your kid with your phone and go like, "Hey, how's it going?" Yeah, you, know, you can okay. check with the camera if they're in class or not or, or what they're up to. Um, and also, I like the way that these these products look because they don't look like uh, expensive smartwatches. They look like toys. Okay. So uh, the, the, they're you know your kids are safe using them. Okay. Um, it's, it's not like they're running around with an eight grand watch that's going to get stolen on there. No, yeah, no, exactly. Sure. And then okay. they also get the opportunity to understand and how how technology works. They get introduced. I love that. Uh, with it. And then uh, you have control of, it's just got location settings. So you can work out where your kid is at all times, um, which is also a safety uh, measurement, which is love really cool. It. And then they get to wear a cool watch. A you know what watch, I mean? Because everybody's doing it. You said on the day that I forgot my watch, now I suddenly feel like I'm <laughs> naked, like I haven't yeah, even you, got yeah, I get, this morning. I get that all the time. Ah. Um, um, okay, so you had to make the shift as an artiste from the pen and paper to a digital space, which means you've got to learn that, and it'll be great to be able to teach that at a younger age. Yeah, and when we were younger, we had something called an etch and sketch. Mm. So parents out there probably <laughs> know about this, but an etch and sketch They is still kind of, exist now, bro, believe it or not. It's they still as popular, yeah. They still exist, but they don't have as many features as a digital version would have. <laughs> so you get these digital LCD writing pads, and what makes them super special is that uh, you can lock the image so that no one can wipe it off. So if you've done a really nice illustration, or a nice note or done some maths homework with it and you want to keep it, you can, you can uh, uh, lock it so it doesn't go away. Okay. And then I, it doesn't have any save features, unfortunately. It's very rudimentary, so they're really inexpensive. But you can, if you want to keep your children's art from it, you take a photograph of yeah, it. Why not? Like, I, just take, I call it take entry level, and that's the thing, is you still want people to have access to this kind of technology without it being prohibitively expensive. Love that. Photos. I'm interested in capturing the world around me as a young person. Yes, and it's it's a little bit more advanced than you'd think. So you get these digital cameras for children, which are which are very simplistic, very easy to use, and uh, not only are they you know digital cameras that can take photographs onto an SD card, which would you know then you as a parent can copy over whatever, and and yeah. look at the pictures. It, they also have video modes now because cameras have video modes. Yeah, of course. So your, your kid can have a dedicated camera that they can take photographs and shoot some video and it shoots 1080p and 720p, which are, are you know, they're entry level resolutions, but they, they're big enough to edit maybe. So if your child has any aspirations to become a YouTuber of some sort, this is a great way to, to start and introduce them. Develop that eye. Yeah, yeah and yeah. G g g get them used to the technology that they, that, you know, they're YouTubers going to be using. use. I love that. Then my kids love playing, even at their young age, love playing grown up. They love doing things that they see us do every day. Tech that allows a kid to feel like they're growing up. Yes, and learn skills at the same time. It's like the best ones. So you get this uh, new kids ATM and it's got this fingerprint reader on it. So. Uh, you can uh, lock your money away. It's a piggy bank, essentially. Yeah. Lock your money away. It's got, a, it's got a, a little slot at the top where you can put your notes in. It'll drag your notes into the machine. Um, it's even got a, a UV counterfeit uh, 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 light, <laughs> which I don't know if works, but they all say it does. <laughs> but I just think, oh, come on. Now you got to watch yourself when you're giving your children pocket like, money. Mom, you gave me counterfeit <laughs> yeah, cash. Oh, what is this? Um, so that, that's, that's cool. And then to get the money out, you oh, use cute, a, a pin code or a finger code to, to get that money out of it. But it's it's a great way to teach kids how to save. And also, ATMs can potentially be a little bit complex. So like, if their first introduction uh, to an ATM is when they're a lot younger, they'll start, th the, the jump to going to a bank ATM will be a little bit Yeah, it simpler. also gets them excited about the notion of money and of sta saving and delving into their savings for something that's really I mean, important. if it's that exciting when the note goes in, yeah. like, I mean. Imagine when it comes out. Absolutely love that, my friend. And trust me, there is no time too early to start introducing your child to tech, because that's the brave new world that
that they're stepping into. Look, I love you, guy, but I just feel the need, looking at your face, that I want to take you on in a challenge, man. You ready to go do battle? It depends what it is, but... Nah, don't have a choice. Let's go. Uh, no, you have no choice because I think a lot of us this time of the year, we are struggling to get out of bed in the mornings. But how about making your mornings marvelous with Super M? Because many of you have told us that Super M is what gets your day going. And we are here to inspire you with our Super M breakfast smoothie challenge. Now, it wouldn't be a challenge unless we put two individuals head to head and they were just talking about it. So Graham and Grant, come and join me in studio, the two G these are up, bitch, to, up against each other. The two G dads. Right. So this is what you meant by challenge. Yeah. The G dads. Ooh, so you're gonna make on, yeah, a eh? breakfast smoothie. So as you can see in front of you, we have a selection of our marvelous Super M flavors. There's banana, chocolate, strawberry, cream soda, as well as vanilla. Ooh, you can exciting. pick any one. You can mix as many as you would love to. And okay. then we've also got some fun ingredients. There's some dry cereal, some rice um, pops. We've got some um, oats for you. I think this is cinnamon. Let me just make yeah, sure. Yes, you've like got a hint cinnamon. of cinnamon. Some honey. honey, some syrup, how come, strawberries. How come crabs got more ingredients than I do? I'm um, more complex you, than you, man. You are no, you're, you're more than welcome you. to delve into Ooh, what my. What is this? That's a little bit of, I think, um, like maple, maple syrup. syrup. Ma this is legit maple syrup. I know. I'm just. Oh, that's oh, maple sip syrup. It, like a and then oh, man. I've had this in ages. I know. And then next to Graham, we've got some nuts, some seeds, some chia seeds, as well as chocolate. So because you don't have that, that's the communal. Yeah, that'll be our communal space. With. Okay. Are you too ready? I'm only giving you 60 seconds. Um, the more you snack, the less ingredients you have for your smoothie. That's all I'm saying. Well, it's a so chef's you're... right, so it's a chef's right to snack. Okay, <gasps> you're allowed to. Okay, um, and uh, sixty seconds, and, the and, then, and you've got mini waffles. If oh, you want to add some some carbs flair. to your okay. to your your, your your smoothie, are you gents ready? Yes, I'm ready. Be creative. Glasses. Play around. Is there just time make limit? The What's the challenge? Okay. You've got all right. sixty seconds. I can do oh. this. Your time begins in five, four, three, two, one. Go. Oh, it's so exciting. Come on, guys. This you're is just making um, a this mess. Is weak sauce, you know. <laughs> oh. That's a lot of maple syrup, Grant Hines. Maybe we're not going to go too, we're not gonna go too much with, with, with the waffles. We want to have enough waffles. And you can't put a, a, a strawberry into your smoothie without the, well, with the green. What's this yeah. thing called? The stem. Strawberry. <laughs> Strawberry oh. sting. Oh, I think the maple syrup. You know, because we can't see, we'll add a little bit of this. Mmm. Because we need some. We have 30 seconds left. Oh, do we? No, the problem is my favorite oh. flavor is cream soda. <laughs> yeah, I see. Yes. This, this whatever this, this is with cream soda. No, Grant. <laughs> you cream drinking soda. this? Uh, you're talking to a man with yellow hair. No. Go for it, go for it, go for it. Wait. No, what no, is this? Go That's okay. Think That's about the flavor bananas, components you are introducing. Ooh. You've just put strawberry. This flavor profile is diverse. Uh, and cream Eight, soda. Seven, Can we blend it? Six, five, four, three, two, We'll quickly let him blend. That's not part of your time. Oh, we're blending part of my time. No, no, no. We'll give you that time. We'll, we'll blend it. You're a first timer. It's okay. We'll Did give you it see to you. he added the peel of the banana? Don't waste. Don't, Don't waste. No, but now you're wasting the banana. Look at that. Listen, it looks good. I have to Look say, at the consistency. Grant, you added so many things to yours, but it looks good. Oh, it does look very enticing. I mean, okay, I Grant, think need talk me mine. through the Super M flavors you've now mixed together. I, I, try to, sure. I try to choose flavors that were diverse, unexpected. I wanted to surprise <laughs> whoever's going to be taste talking, testing this. Uh, yes, yeah, so let's add, let's add. Look at the wow, <laughs> look at you. <laughs> what time in the morning is it? This is, this is breakfast. This is breakfast. Exactly. Why are you biting See, this we, and we, not drinking this? We live off the land here, okay? So we don't eat if we don't eat what we make on the show, okay? We subsistence. Eat. Mm -hmm. Oh, have a okay, so I, I, I went for a particular kind of like an earthy flavor profile. Yeah, I didn't push the boat out quite as much as my yellow head friend here. Yeah? Bit of beta gluten going in. You've got to have the oats, but not too much. A little bit of cinnamon. Went with the maple syrup because I love that flavor mm -hmm. profile. It's absolutely cool. awesome. Then some nuts. I went with the cashews. Just a little bit of chocolate just for that added note. And then at the heart is my super M banana mm. flavor. That banana chocolate syrup, beautiful. And then I tempered it with a little bit of vanilla flavor as well. Um, but I'm sitting here so jealous because I didn't use, I wasn't brave enough to use the cream soda. 
And I can't even see the green there. I mean, no, you can't. It's just blended. It all worked out. Well done, gentlemen. I mean, you live once, and I think you need to try as many things. So I try to use some unconventional uh, ingredients. Maybe there's no contestant <laughs> here that has probably used banana skin inside their smoothies. No. So, you know, I wanted to stand out. Banana skin and cream soda, Super M together. Fantastic. And then sesame seeds on the top just to, to, to edge it off, just to give it a bit of, like, um, to bite. It's so it's so good. It might be the last shake you ever drink. <laughs> there we go. Well, listen, this is how breakfast smoothies are done on your Feel Good Breakfast show. We add Pisang's fella. We add all but kinds at, of flavors. Look at your workstation for goodness sake. We have a lot of fun, including making a big mess. But why don't you head on over to our social media pages. You've seen how the gents have made it. But let us know how you shake things up with Super M. And remember to tag at Super M underscore SA on your comments. And who knows, there might be something in for you. Hint, Beautiful. Hint, nudge, nudge. Well done. <laughs> Hola, Zanzi! It's going to be a hot day in the big city. Super M. Anytime gap filler. Made with love by Clover. I can make my day. Colour Your Plate with Koo is back on SABC2 with a flavour-filled second season that will have you eating better with Koo. If you think you're Mzanzi's next cooking star, you have the chance to show us how you colour your plate with Koo. Take a video of yourself creating a colourful meal with Koo and tell us why you should be selected. WhatsApp your entry video to 072-741-5357 to stand a chance to be on the show and win your share of prizes valued at 500,000 Rand. Enter now. Thank you so much for tuning in as we continue our tech talk right now. I know we're having a lot of fun with our kid-related tech at the moment, but this one is especially for parents and vital for all of us. In fact, it's something that keeps me up at night. It's easy to turn on YouTube for your little ones to keep them busy. And there's some great content there. Unfortunately, there is also a lot of stuff on YouTube that you don't want your kids to see. Now, Grant is back with us to show us how to consume video online safely, my friend, because 
YouTube is not a safe place. No, look, the internet is something that I think a lot of parents out there, um, b b both of us being parents, need to be conscious of. We know that there's a lot of content that's going out. A lot of the stuff we consume that's fine for us is not content we necessarily want our children to consume. And YouTube recognized this and released a product called YouTube Kids, which is great because, again, YouTube is a nice platform where we want, you know, we it's a, could... It's an opportunity to learn. Yeah, exactly. And there's a couple of things that when you are using YouTube, I want to give you guys a couple of tips and tricks as to make sure that you're using YouTube constructively as a parent. Okay. And the first one is don't use the YouTube app as it is if you're, if you're a parent. The YouTube app does things like it serves different algorithms, so it, it enforces your watching habits. So the content that you might want to watch, maybe you love watching tech videos like me, uh, there's just tech videos all over the show. Um, Whatever is in that category will start being uh, served Pushed. to you, <coughs> and then that will be served if, you know, by default Indirect to your child your kid, who's, yeah. who's watching it. So okay. I, I would recommend not using it because the, the algorithm is not catering for children. Um, the other thing is to avoid smaller online video apps. So when I talk about uh, that, I mean stuff like Vimeo. Yeah. We all know Vimeo as, a, as an online video platform or other online video platforms like Daily Motion and all those kind of things. Avoid them. They are a lot smaller. They've got a lot less stricter uh, security measures. Some of them are like short film like productions. It's not necessarily it's a not safe a huge space for kids. Of control on mm -hmm. what what content it is way to less control so make sure that you avoid those third party apps okay. the third thing is download this new app so it's it's called youtube kids download it onto your phone there is quite a stringent setup process it's not uh, as simple as just switching That's on and going. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is this is part of the safety mechanisms that they've that they've incorporated. And you can sign in as a parent, uh, inform the app of what your child's age is, and then start selecting content which you want your child to see or what you want served to them. Remember, on YouTube Kids, there's no ads, so your kids aren't getting targeted with advertising, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is which is great. Um, it's it rolls uh, like naturally uh, from different content, and there's content that wouldn't traditionally be on TV. Like there's little studios all around uh, Africa that are producing video content. And, and some amazing there. kids' content. And I think kids love seeing other kids doing cool stuff. That's the best way for them to learn in that process. So for them to be able to do that, does it still operate on the same kind of mechanism of once it's established what your kid likes, yes. the algorithms are still there, but obviously servicing their yes. aims. And, and, and the pool of content is, is a lot smaller. So I've actually, I've actually got it set up on the TV over here. So this is a bunch of uh, content that you can kind of typically get to see for, for preschoolers. Um, and then uh, this is what's recommended, as you said. So that's what that heart at the top of the screen is. Um, and then you can also, you know, find channels for learning. You can also uh, find different kinds of shows like that that you might want to watch. That are, they have like uh, deals with YouTube, so that these are all legitimate uh, bits of content. Uh, and obviously, you can also like explore here. This and they've been quite clever. Right? I think you know we used to see kind of digital and and TV as two different things, but they're part of the same ecosystem now. So if they are properties that your kids love on TV some of the brands we've just seen there there'll be highlights reels there'll be focuses on kind of lessons learned during episodes in their little channels on uh, kids YouTube which is great so you can kind of exactly no media outlet moment no media outlet is just on TV and that's just a shout out to our uh, YouTube channel you can catch Express the show <laughs> on YouTube as well. Every it day. extends past <laughs> to the experience. And I think that's a hallmark of a really good entertainment production. Uh, it's not just what you see here on TV, it extends. It becomes the anchor um, on TV. And then lastly, uh, well, two, two things. Uh, firstly, make sure that you are watching with your kids. And secondly, if you don't have a smart TV, so we've pushed this to a smart TV, you get devices like this, which are inexpensive. They're little boxes. They're called Android TVs. They even have buttons on them that like uh, that say like YouTube or whatever. And they're really nice devices that can transform what would be a just a normal standard television set into a TV that can yeah, play something like place. YouTube okay. Kids. So uh, I look at getting one of those. If you think that it's just a tablet or phone and you don't want your kid <clears> to <throat> sit there, yeah. it's not. What's nice with our child having a TV that can play YouTube Kids is uh, they like to build blocks at the same time yeah. or, or uh, learning to crawl and you want to have something like some nursery rhymes going on in the background. Because uh, often what they see TV inspires the that. action and they want to get practical about it. So I love that. It adds to that kind of free pay element as well. 
all about control, buddy, and I'm so glad that you said you should be watching as well. Um, there have been some scary stories floating around about the kind of content as a preschooler's parents. Every day, parents are chatting to us about things like Huggy Wuggy and these crazy new things. So it is there, the danger is present, but you can operate safely. YouTube Kids is a great way to start. I feel like I need to challenge you again, man, just looking at your face. Are you ready? Push-ups this time. Let's go. Oh, you know what, G? I see you're in a very competitive mode. Let's give uh, let's give Grant a little bit of a break, but you come and join us because it's five second time, and today's theme is all things travel, and we are going to put Graham up against this very lovely chef, Chef Michaela, and she's here to see who between the two of them can win themselves a box of Oma uh -oh. Rusks. Michaela, good morning. Good morning. Um, Oma Rusks, do you have a particularly favourite fa flavour? The caramel ones. Caramel. Mm. Okay, so we've got some buttermilk ones. We can the see OGs. if we can get you the OGs, yeah. a box of the caramels. But no, listen, so let's please get me the caramel ones. We, okay. Look, we know people, eh? A box <laughs> is up for grabs. That's if you win, you get your hands on the box. Okay. Okay, so how this game works, very right. easy. We've got a theme, which is all things travel. I'm going to ask you to name three things in five seconds. Oh, if you like can in five seconds, you win that I feel category. like you're a global traveler. I feel like you mm, are the traveler. Nah, eh? I feel like you're the traveler. Uh, you're a traveler, look well, at it. Well, I think we're all travelers. <laughs> if you're moving from work to home, you are <laughs> a traveler. You're a commuter. No, well, let's well, start ready, off. Ready. Okay. Who's gonna go first, Graham or Michaela? <laughs> okay. Ching, mm. chong, mm. cha. Okay. You. Okay. You wanna go first? I'll go first. Graham, name three modes of transport. Car, bicycle, bus. There we go. See? All right, okay. Michaela, name three ways to travel to Johannesburg. Plane, car, or train. Mm. Can you yes. still train? Yes. Some yes, people have cycled from Cape Town to Johannesburg yeah. for charity. Your next goal. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Graham, name three places you can dip a Omar Rusk. Um, you, uh, Mount Kilimanjaro, you could do it. New York or London. Oh, <laughs> anywhere. You can dip a Omar anywhere. anywhere. literally. Michaela. Name three holiday destinations in South Africa. Um, Durban, um, Mpumalanga. Oh, sh Sherbet, it's not in South Africa. It is. Is it? It, it is. 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 Whoops. I just gave away how dumb I am. No. <laughs> Look, we, we have a competition who can make the dumbest face every day. You know, you know what that says mm -hmm. to me is you need a holiday to explore Mzanzi. Yeah. I really do. I was waiting for Haman's Kral to come up. That would have been Had first. Honest. I was thinking like outside of Western Cape. Mm. Okay, no, well done for challenging yourself. Cape Townians. Okay, oh, yeah. G-Men, are you ready for your no, next I'm ready, category? I'm ready, I sense the edge now, okay. Name three things you can buy at an airport. Um, you can buy toothpaste, you can buy a cup of coffee and you can buy food. I feel like that's things you've bought recently. Yeah. Uh, do, do you know what I, I went through? Because we got stuck in that nightmare journey back and all the things you can't buy, like your kids' clothing, like that's not 500,000 rand a thing. You know, underwear for people. You can buy a 450,000 rand, you know, courtier bra, but not functional underwear. Huh? Crazy, man. Listen, <laughs> don't let the little ones soil themselves. That's all I'm going to exactly, say. Exactly, yeah. Okay, Michaela, this is up your alley. Name three things you can't take on a plane. Um... More than 100 mils of liquids, a gun, and um, a knife. <laughs> yes, you can't take any of those things on an aeroplane. There we go. That got real, eh? That got yeah, real really, really quickly, really eh? Good, and then, and then it you just got scary because right. I panicked. Okay. <laughs> but it's good that people know those, those things, those yeah. things. Okay, I feel like it's neck and neck here. I feel no, like I'm Graham so is uh, leading a little bit. Oh, just got my nose out in front. Just, just, okay. just a little bit. See Graham, the deal. Come on. name three things you can find on a beach. A uh, beach ball, a uh, dog with sand in its hair, and a sunbather. Nice. Hey, I was thinking if it's a golden retriever dog, that's what I was trying to do. There's long hair, why it's got sand in it. You can find those things <laughs> on the beach. Well done. Well done. Okay, Mount <laughs> Michaela, think about this one. Name three animals you can see in the Kruger. Ooh, giraffes, elephants, and lions. Oh, spot okay. on. Well done. Graham, name three things you can eat as patkos. Uh, boiled eggs, uh, chicken pieces, and super seas. Super seas? <laughs> mm. 
Come on, oh, didn't you always used to get a specific? The strawberry ones. No, no, granadilla. Orange. Granadilla. Mm. Uh, but no, it was always that, because we always used to make the pot course and then you'd open the, the thing with the boiled eggs and then the whole car would smell Ooh. like that and you'd yeah. be like, oh. And, and chicken drumsticks yeah. for our family. <laughs> family is different to my family, clearly. <laughs> I was that kid that refused really to eat old. eggs and chicken together. <laughs> I still, to this I day, don't, for don't sure. eat for eggs sure. and chicken together. My mother would boil the eggs that they blew. Ooh. Yeah. No, I feel Ooh, you. I feel you, Some girl. mothers do that. I Sorry, Mom, I'm exposing you, you here. Okay. <laughs> Final one. Okay. I feel like, Michaela, this one's going to be yours. Name three things you can buy at a putt stall. Ooh, rusks, um, roaster cook, and normal cake. Okay. Yeah, and cook sisters, and nuts, mm. and sweeties. Okay. Anything. Jam, jam. Jam. Always Honey. jam. Mm. Okay. Grant said jam in the background. Okay. See, he's yeah. he's very, okay. very competitive. Mm. This is the final round. Are you two ready? Yes. Okay. okay. Graham, name three countries that start with an A. Austria, um, I want to say <laughs> Antarctica. Uh, Antarctica is not a. Uh, it's a country. It's a continent. Oh, it's, is it's a country and a continent all on its own? It must Australia. be. Hey? It's probably like part of. No, it is. It must be a standalone. Please don't ask me to What's another one? anything. What did I, I Australia, said Austria, Australia, Angola. Yeah. No, but as a South African, can you really say Australia? Are you laughing? Yes, it's a continent and a country. <laughs> <laughs> okay, damn it. Tripped okay. on the finish line. That's okay. Michaela, mm. name three countries that start with the letter C. Oh, um. Mm -hmm. exactly. Oh my gosh! Exactly. China. <laughs> Czech oh, Republic. The place that I'm supposed to come from. <laughs> China, Czech Republic. Croatia is a lovely place. Croatia. Hey? <laughs> I think that Any was enough there. Eh? I think I did it. Cyprus. I think I did it. <laughs> Okay. Don't get the box. <laughs> you get the box. Yes, you come can on. Get the box. Well done, G-Man. Michaela, it's okay. We will work on your geography skills. Good effort. We will it was work. more pressure than anything else. It's okay. No, but I call it screensaver mode. On holiday. The brain just goes into screensaver mode. I it's it. okay. Well, join us again tomorrow when we announce this week's competition winner and find out who will be walking away with that 2,000 Rand and Omar Rusk's hamper. Cheers. <laughs> oh, and good coffee. Me too. <laughs> There's more in every dip with Omar. Sunshine, Everflu C Immune Booster Plus, now with vitamin D. Brought to you by Pharma Dynamics.
Your generosity can ignite a love for reading amongst our youth. Share your homegrown story. See Cadbury Story Edition Packs. There's a glass and a half in everyone. It's my feel good breakfast show. Good morning to you and welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. If you're wondering where Raul is, well, he is reporting live from Weinberg Boys. Mm, we're in for a treat this morning. There's a little bit of rugby and, of course, an amazing performance ahead of their school performance. Let's uh, get a little more. Yes, thank you so much, Chi and Zoe. And let me tell you, Mzanzi, and let me welcome you to Weinberg Boys High School right here in Cape Town. And we're doing something special this morning. And let me tell you, it's going to be one that is rich with culture. Now, we're going to be covering everything from sport to the drama department. And let me tell you, I'm chatting to a special individual right now who is the leader of the Weinberg Boys Vocal Ensemble. Now, one thing I love about Weinberg, he exposes all these young kids to so much good positive stimulation and such a degree of polarity when it comes to physical, mental, and everything else in between. But I'm here with the man himself. His name is Tristan Gerard, and I'm dying to hear more about what you guys are doing here because it sounds exceptional. I heard some of the uh, preparations, and you guys are on another level. But firstly, Tristan, how are you doing, man? I'm doing really good. How are you doing today? Uh, awesome, man. It is quite cool to be reporting live from your school. How does that feel? Is everybody watching? Are they awake even yet? <laughs> I know a few people that are awake, yeah. <laughs> okay, listen, man, let me talk straight to you about this because the boys that you have uh, put together sound incredible. But talk to me exactly about a vocal ensemble. What's the difference between something like that and, let's say, a traditional choir? Well, we, we have a choir at our school, but, like, it's a really large group, maybe, like, 80 members or so. Uh, it's also divided into the four voice parts, but the thing is you have the piano accompanying you, and if someone messes up, it's not really too big of a deal, you know? Okay. But in a vocal ensemble, usually we take the two best the two best singers from each of those four voice parts and put them together, and we usually perform unaccompanied as well. So if someone messes up and goes off pitch, then it messes the whole group up, so everyone has to be really, really accurate with how they sing and everyone yeah. needs to make sure they work together and it's quite a challenge. Synchronicity is of utmost importance. Exactly. You mentioned four parts. Let me just ask you quickly, uh, is that with regards to the range in your voice? Exactly, yeah. So we have the first tenor part, yeah. then the second tenor and the baritones and the basses. You seem like you could be a bass. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> could definitely pick up that deep bass within you. Well, listen, you're the leader of the ensemble. What exactly are your roles and responsibilities for the group? Well, when we're, when we're performing as a group, I'm in charge of conducting the groups so I make sure everyone sticks together on time um, I'm also responsible for keeping the group on pitch so if I hear someone go a bit off I just indicate to them and try and keep the okay, group nice. up on the same key yeah. I, um, I also need to indicate dynamics you know if someone needs to go loud or something because you know the group consists of a lot of really really good singers yeah. but singing on your own is so different to singing in a group like this it's like they're all really talented but you need someone to be able to keep the group together like that and then during rehearsals as well, I help uh, our teacher in charge, Natalie Cog. I help her uh, um, run the rehearsals and just manage everything with the group, like, uh, like uh, manage our repertoire for upcoming performances, yeah. stuff like that. And you're quite busy, eh? <laughs> it's not just a role, it's not just singing, but you're managing a group. And one thing I love about what you're mentioning is the fact that you have teamwork, which is of utmost importance. Exactly. And that synchronicity and obviously that union coming together to form what I call the magic in the voice. Listen, if someone wanted to be a part of this ensemble, maybe someone like me, I want to audition. How do I make the cut? How do I get in your crew? What do I have to do? Well, firstly, obviously, you have to be a competent singer. So oh, you need... Oh, that me out then. <laughs> I'm <only> joking. <laughs> so you need to be able to... Um, match pitch, you need to be able to harmonize, and you yeah. need to be able to keep um, you need to be able to keep on pitch while having other people sing different things around you. Um, but it's more than just being a good singer, you know, our school like prides itself on our four pillars, you know, everyone's involved in many different areas. So mm. we need someone who's a responsible individual who is hard working and you'll see if you take a look at the members of our group, so many of them are like actors, top musicians, sportsmen, academics, you know. It's not, they're not just there to sing in the vocal ensemble. Like, our group has a, quite a reputation of being like a prestigious group at mm. the school, so it's important that all of our members like, follow the ideals of what a Weinberg man is. A Weinberg man, right. I'm getting a bit nervous here because I think one of these Weinberg mans is going to take my job soon for all the talent that I'm already seeing out here. Listen, man, I'm so excited to obviously hear more about what your ensemble and what the group has to offer. We are going to be entertained by some performances, but before we get into that, are there any sort of events or competitions that you guys are going to be running or can we can expect coming up in the near future? Well, we're performing for many different events at the school, like we have our school Founders Day coming up. We're performing at the Old Boys Dinner happening in a few weeks. 
And then also every year we take part in the Cape Town East Stafford as well as the nice. Afrikaans East Stafford. Um, and we're, last year we performed really well in that. We achieved a diploma with 98%. Wow, that is incredible. The bar's been set, right? Yeah, so we're really <laughs> hoping to keep up that standard this year. Oh, well, Justin, man, thank you so much for uh, allowing us to find out more about your group this morning. And I'm so, so excited. And Mzanzi, you definitely want to jump on board with the excitement too because we are going to be absolutely entertained by this entire group and this ensemble coming at you live from Weinberg Boys High School. It's going to be a morning filled with rich culture, entertainment, and of course, lots of magic. We'll see you later. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Raul, coming to us live from Weinberg Boys High School. Well, we are back in studio and we're about to make a classic carrot cake. I mean, it's one of those all-time amazing desserts that just tastes incredible and makes a very impressive statement. Michaela is here to show us just how to make an award-winning classic carrot cake. Michaela, I think a carrot cake, I think some nuts in there. I think uh, a carrot cake's always super moist. It's got a great creamy, um, I say creamy, but it's a cream cheese um, frosting. So it adds a little bit of tang to the mix. A tang, that's yeah. what I was going for. So it's not overly sweet. Yeah. That's why most people like a carrot cake. A good carrot cake. But in this case, we're using the Golden Cloud premix, oh. which is very exciting, because if you're not a baker, this is ideal for you. It is ideal. So for someone like myself, where I literally just shop as I need, I don't always have all the ingredients you need to make a carrot cake, because there's quite a few components and they just make it super easy for you. And um, you know how long it takes to grate all the carrots? You have to grate like five carrots, it makes like three cups, it's a lot of work. It's That's a lot of work. icing sugar for this mixture. Okay. So what you want to do, with a premix, is always mix your wet ingredients. First, so I have two eggs here, just give them a good old whisk together. We have some milk. Mm -hmm. We We have some oil. And this is the great thing about these Golden Cloud cake mixes, it's you just need to add the wet ingredients. And most be. people have oil, eggs, milk in their house. Everything else is included in the bag, like your sugar, your rising agents, and your flour. So it's all easy and convenient. And your flavors. 100%. So um, with this, th it's obviously um, carrot cake. So there's some dehydrated carrots in there. It's quite cute. <gasps> That's really cool. I know. And if you really wanted to spice it up, you could um, add some nuts to this mixture, mm. uh, some pineapple I know people like in their carrot cake. Uh, not my vibe, but you could totally do that. Um, yeah. I love that. We I love how you can together. really mix it up. And of course, the search for the perfect baking duo, it is coming to your Feel Good Breakfast show soon. Ooh. So make sure you tune into Expresso next week to watch the five Christmas in July finalists. And these are the duos that will be channeling the Christmas spirit in the ultimate bake-off for the grand prize worth 50,000 Rand. And this is all brought to you by Golden Cloud and Beacon. Now, the secret to baking a perfect cake, where does that lie? That softness lies in golden cloud. Yes, of <laughs> course it does. And then on your end, so I've actually mixed the whole mixture together. Look at that, quick and I easy. Know. Took five seconds. I've got put some that butter into here. Pan. Can I yes. cream it? Cream it for me, please. Okay, I feel like this is a very fancy one. I know. Oh, this there is we go. literally the problem I had last week. It's electric, you just push a button and it ups its speed. So I've got some butter here that's all in the whisk. Clearly we don't want that. What else do I add? You can um, speed that up just to get it out of the whisk if you'd like. Then um, you want to cream your cream cheese to that too. Okay, I'm adding some cream cheese and quite a generous portion at that. Yes, it's usually about a full tub. Okay. Okay. Go for gold. Yeah. Cream cheese. Let me open this for you. This is our icing sugar, which was also included in the Golden Cloud package. Okay, I'm getting nice, the hang nice, of this nice. fancy whisk. Okay. And then we can add some white chocolate. We have some beacon white chocolate. Ooh, we are using our heavenly cream. There we go. Beautiful. And some vanilla. Yes, please. And while you're going, I'll gradually add this in. Oh, let me turn the speed down so we don't get ice and sugar all over us. Then you want to bake this in the oven for about 20 minutes at 180 degrees Celsius. And I know we're making the carrot cake today, 
but this is also a great mixture kit for if you want to make carrot cake cupcakes. 100%. And that's a quick and easy way of um, making something look fancy, but with minimal time and usage. Nice, at look that. at that. Okay, naturally you'll blend it until it's all done. And it is. Wow, beautiful. Perfect. And then once this comes out of the oven, you want to divide it into two layers. Then you can add some of your icing into the center and do some piping on the top or some pretty swirls. And there you go. So, okay, so you put this in the oven and then divide it into two. I always thought when I see those giant cakes, people just made double. Uh, that was too dark. Okay, yeah. so I wasn't wrong. Michaela, yeah. thank you for this delicious recipe showing us how quick and easy it is to make your golden cloud carrot cake. If you want to get your hands on this recipe, I think it's as simple as just go and buy the classic carrot cake and icing mix and follow the instructions, but we also have that for you on our website, expressoshow.com. And remember, next week, our five duos, they'll be battling it out for the title of the Golden Baker's Search Christmas in July edition champions. And this is a bake-off you do not want to miss. What, Peter Gluckin? Hello, do you know what Peter Gluckin is? What is Peter Gluckin? No one knows what Peter Gluckin is. Peter Gluckin is a natural fiber in jungle oats that helps lower cholesterol and keep hearts well. Yes. Jungle, do life with heart. Take lashes higher. New Revlon Eyes Wide Open Mascara. The curved brush volumizes and lifts lashes vertically for a wide-eyed lash look. Hemp seed oil conditions for healthy looking lashes. Go higher. New Revlon Eyes Wide Open Mascara. It's my feel good birthday show. First hour of the show done and dusted after the break. The Weinberg Boys Vocal Ensemble are going to perform. Then we're going to get into tech four. Oh, little people! <laughs> we're getting into tech for kids, and we're going to show you some tablet games that your kids can play and learn from. Mm, think rolls too. It's awesome. All of that on the other side of the news. <laughs> Thank you, Graham and Grant. Let's start off with your national headlines. ESCOM has said its energy transition plan may require as much as 1.2 trillion rand in investments for new generation and distribution capacity, with the bulk of the money expected to come from private investors. The state-owned power utility, which is saddled with 30, 396 billion rand in debt, plans to tap private investors for the 990 billion it needs to fund new generation capacity and shift to cleaner energy energy sources by 2030, and that is according to the general manager for strategy and planning. ESCOM also needs 300 billion rand to improve its air quality over the next decade. Staying with local news, Transnet has reported a net profit of 5 billion rand for the 2021-22 financial year despite ongoing operational issues. The beleaguered state-owned ports and railway company had posted an 8.7 billion rand loss 
for the previous financial year. Full year revenue was up 1.8% at 68.5 billion rand for the year ending 31 March 2022. Transnet also received an unqualified audit report for the first time since 2018. South Africa's ports have been rated as some of the worst performing in the world, while its railway lines also leave much to be desired. Moving to news abroad, the space jacket worn by Buzz Aldrin uh, while flying to the moon has sold at a New York auction for $2.8 million. Adorned with a US flag and the NASA logo, Aldrin wore the white and flight jacket while hur hurling uh, through space in Apollo 11's command module Columbia. It's one of the 69 personal belongings that the 92-year-old has decided to sell. The jacket becomes the most valuable American space artifact after sold at the auction. Aldrin traveled to the moon in July 1969 and it's the only living member of the mission's three main crew. Staying with news beyond our own borders, miners in northeast Angola have discovered a rare pure pink diamond believed to be the largest rough diamond of its kind to be unearthed in 300 years. The Australian site operator named the 170 carat stone the Lulo Rose. The diamond will be sold on international tenders by the Angolan State Diamond Marketing Company. To quote, this find continues to showcase Angola as an important player to the world stage for diamond mining and that is according to the minerals resources minister the pink star which is a 59 carat pink diamond sold for 71.2 million dollars in 2017 the most expensive ever now, staying with news abroad, Norway is experiencing an uncanny hot summer. It's a perfect time for long swims and fishing adventures. However, for many people in the capital, Oslo, their summer plans have been somewhat thawed by the presence of Freya, a 600 kilogram walrus named after the, the Norse goddess of love and beauty. For a week now, Freya has enchanted Norwegians by basking in the sun of the Oslo Ford while literally bending a few boats in the process. Freya has in fact sunk several small boats after trying to get up on them to laze in the sun. Boat owners with Freya wishes Freya to be gone, but many others, however, have had the exact opposite reaction to Freya's antics. Norway's Directorate of Fisheries has warned spectators to stay clear of her, stating a walrus is not normally a danger to humans, but if it's disturbed and doesn't get the rest it needs, it may feel threatened and attack. So far, attempts to keep Freya safe while also protecting the boats in the area have failed. Perhaps it's best to just let her lie. There we go. Let's leave Freya. Let's free Freya. <laughs> I think we can start a whole movement there. But that's your morning headlines for now. I'll have a final update shortly after 8. Thanks, so Let's uh, deal with the wall rest in the room first, shall we? Johnny Bairstow's 90 from 53 balls, as well as a quick fire 52 from just 18 deliveries from Mo and Ali were the catalyst for a 41 run win for England in the first T20 against South Africa yesterday. The hosts posting a massive 234 for six, thanks to those two knocks. But the Proteus left to rue some shoddy fielding, dropping no less than five catches. But Lungi and Giri did shine with the ball. He was the pick of the SA bowlers, taking five for just 39. In response, a brilliant knock of 72 of uh, 28 from Tristan Stubbs and then 57 from Reza Hendricks. Sadly, not enough for the visitors as Richard Gleeson took three for 51 to compound the Proteas to that loss. And the second T20 takes uh, place in Cardiff tonight. Then on to the Commonwealth Games and with the opening ceremony taking place tonight, Team South Africa have been forced into a number of changes across a number of sporting codes. So Trisha Chetty misses the game through injury, adding to the cradling loss of Marazan Cup due to personal reasons. Then Olympian and Tour de France rider Nick Lamini misses out through injury, with Callum Ormiston now replacing him on the bike. Then para-athlete Ernst van Dijk, a titan in the sport. He's out injured and will be replaced by paramarathon, in the paramarathon by Tian Bosch, while triathlete Nicolas Quinet, who's also injured, will also be an absentee. And then 200-metre sprinter Luke Colo Adams, he has also withdrawn 
from the games due to fatigue. Then on to football and a story that's been evolving throughout the week. South President Dr. Danny Yodon has now clarified the issues of bonuses for Banyana Banyana and also what will happen with the prize money awarded by CAF. So the prize money of 8.4 million rand will be paid to SAFA and many assumed I think it would be added to the 9.2 million in bonuses promised by SAFA. However, that is not actually the case. So speaking to Robert Marawa on Marawa Sports Worldwide, Jordan explained that while Banyana are guaranteed a bonus of 400,000 rand from SAFA, the Football Association will receive the prize money from CAF and that money will then go into the budget for the bonuses, expenses and more. And at the same time, President Cyril Ramaphosa has said the team deserve to be paid as much as their male counterparts. Then finally, on to the 2023 Live Golf schedule that will not be competing with the majors and the international team events or heritage events. This has now been announced according to the event organizers. So next year, 48 players will play in 14 tournaments with $405 million in combined purses. It's incredible with a choice of playing in the more traditional tournaments as well. The announcement comes as the third tournament of the Breakaway Series gets underway today. That event in New Jersey is one of eight tournaments in the inaugural year of the controversial series that I think is only going to grow in momentum. That's where we leave our sporting headlines for now. The roads should be waking up. Let's take a look at what the traffic looks like. Thanks, Graham. We start with traffic in Midrand, Gauteng. There are roadworks on the N1 southbound after New Road, and the emergency lane is closed. Please drive carefully. Moving to KwaZulu Natal and Umschlanga, there's a stationary vehicle on the N2 southbound after the Umschlanga interchange. The left lane is blocked. Please approach with caution. And moving back to Gauteng in Midrand, there's a multi vehicle accident on the N1 southbound. It's after New Road, and that left shoulder of the road is closed. Please approach with caution and add some extra travel time to avoid any delays. And that's your traffic for now. A final update coming away shortly after 8. And let's start at looking at your weather and some news. An earthquake of 7.0 magnitude struck in northern Luzon, the Philippines' most populous island, at about 8.43 a.m. local time yesterday. Its epicenter was some 13 kilometers southeast of the small town of Dolores in the Abra province, with a depth of 10 kilometers. Interior Secretary Benjamin Abalos Jr. said five deaths were recorded. He also said that 280 towns in the 15 provinces had been affected. Three bridges were destroyed in Abra. The quake's impact was felt in the capital city, Manila, more than 400 kilometers away. The quake also triggered landslides with pictures showing large boulders and rocks tumbling onto the road in the town of Boko, south of the epicenter. The Philippines Institute of Vol Volcanology and Seismology said citizens should brace for after shocks but added it had not issued any tsunami warnings. Abra is a landlocked region known for deep valleys and mountainous terrain. Our thoughts and prayers are certainly with all of those currently affected. Well, from some environmental news and earthquake news, we now move to our sunrise views. One of our regulars, Adrian Witboy, sent us this stunner all the way from Durbanville. Just look at that beautiful burnt orange clouds with the sun peeking up from behind the homes. And then Valencia sent us this baby pink sky from her home in El Dorado Park, Johannesburg. Bongiwe sent us a clear gray orange sky all the way from Bulawayo in Zimbabwe. And finally, another one from our regulars Emil Jones sent us this stunning photo out in Buclu, Johannesburg if you would love to share a sunrise photo with us do so on 063-408-8863 let's get into your temperatures Pulakwane expect a low of 6 a high of 21 Mbombela 9 with a high of 23 Pretoria 822 Johannesburg 7 with a high of 20 Mahiking 10 reaching a high of 23 Three. Partly cloudy conditions in Klerksdorp, 8 is your low, 21 your high, Kimberley 11 with a high of 24, Bloemfontein 621, Richards Bay 1523, Peter Maritzburg 1123, partly cloudy conditions in Durban, 16 is your low, 23 your high, Mtata 11 with a high of 19.
East London, 1723, Craddock, 822, sunny in Kabecha, a low of 13, a high of 21 for today. George, 921, Cape Town, 1221, Worcester, 724, sunny in Sutherland. Your temperatures range between 0 and 17 for today. And Uppington, brace yourself for a beautiful sunny day. Your low is 9, your high 29 degrees Celsius. And that's where we leave your weather for now on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Thank you so much. So time now for an inspirational performance. We've already heard just how amazing the standards that these Weinberg boys that are part of their vocal ensemble hold themselves to. Let's get a taste of their incredible perfectionism right now. Yes, thank you so much, G, and welcome back to Weinberg Boys High School. We are out here at Clegg Hall, and we are about to dive into our first performance. But before we do, let me introduce you to the lads right now and find out exactly what is going to be going on right now. Tristan, you've been my man uh, when it comes to educating me and feeding me. What exactly are we performing today? So right now we're going to be performing Jesus Leme Nadi Fado, okay. Afrikaans. Okay. So um, all of us are English speakers, so obviously we're not used to singing Afrikaans songs, but I mentioned that Afrikaans at Stedford that we do before yes. and a requirement for that is that we do an Afrikaans song uh, so we do one each year and this is the one that we've chosen for this year to do. Oh beautiful stuff. Well Mzanzi here we have at the Weimar Boys High School Vocal Ensemble. Take it away gents. Shivers just watching their performance. I wish I could scream out and celebrate, but there you have it, Zanzi. I hope you absolutely loved that. And don't worry, we've got two more performances coming at you from the Weinberg Boys Vocal Ensemble in just a bit. So don't go anywhere. We'll see you after this. Nice Nourish your skin with Ingram's tissue oil and rich skincare range. Now, with 72 hour rich moisture for radiant, glowing skin. New Look Ingrams. Your skin, your brave.
welcome back as we take another techie turn. Yes, I know, kids are getting a lot of screen time. It comes with the territory these days. And in some ways, screen time has, I think, as a whole, is unavoidable. Um, especially if you're a parent of young children, it becomes a necessary crutch at times. But that doesn't mean that it has to be damaging to your child. Curating your child's experience with technology is extremely important, vital now. So here are some tablet games, and I use the term games loosely for children that are safe and educational because they're fun and they present like a game, but they're actually learning tools. Exactly, and I think one of the reasons we need to be more conscious, we, we have tablets like this and we give our kids... That's not a tablet. <laughs> <laughs> this is a tablet, That's okay? the biggest tablet that has ever been born. Well, you know, Samsung tablets, they're the best. It's but, amazing. Uh, but like, we give our children tablets Tablets, right mm. because they're easy and they're portable to use but we don't necessarily think about what kind of games they're playing and that's why I think we we, we often like criticize the medium mm. which is like oh screen time but can learn from the benefits oh. of thinking about the games that we are feeding them these, so, these are learn tools I've watched tablets being used with and I know I'm using an extreme example with autistic children that have had breakthroughs they've been able to tap into the child of a mind in a way that few other practical tools can and this of course, induces them to the use of technology in a, a very powerful there's a lot way. Of, there's a lot of literacy yeah, that, for that, sure. that children are going to need to use going up, uh, going into the more working so. world, going more into so now yeah, than ever before, and in, in yeah. ways that we we can't imagine as for adults. Sure. And, and and preparing them for this unforeseeable future is important. And one of the things that we can do is provide educational games that they are facilitating their time with. This is one of my absolute favorites. My two-year-old is developing an ability in this game. Like, you, she gets it. You know this game better than I do. Yeah, so we call it rolls. Trolls, okay, because she can't say Think Rolls. <laughs> it's called Trolls in our family, but Think Rolls is amazing, and it's super cute as well. Yeah, so Think <laughs> Rolls 2 is a great game for kids to play. It's a platformer, so it's a, it's a genre that we are kind of all familiar with as, as old-school gamers, but the focus is on problem-solving and mm. puzzle-solving. So the kind of skills that your child's going to learn is lateral thinking, which is is a skill that you can't learn at school, unfortunately, though our education system does not accommodate for lateral thinking. And lateral problem solving is something I only got to learn in university. And for kids to start learning that from, you know... And you're uh, a lateral thinker. <laughs> exactly. Like, I, I thrive with thinking laterally, and I think that's, that's a skill that everybody should have. And having tools like games, like think rolls, to get kids to think laterally is a great idea. And maybe you'll learn a thing or two to go, like, solving problems in a weird way. Have you had a moment? There, there are those, those rather kind of um, sobering moments it's why I give the tablet back. I'm like, no, no, you can do this one yourself. <laughs> just, just persevere. My dad with maths homework. Must, dad, help yeah. me with my maths homework in grade five. So, no, 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 you can do be, this. You, you can be do terrified. this. Terrified. Okay, I absolutely love that. And you can start them early, man. Preschool is a great time because their brains are are engaging with the world and they are consuming new stuff. And the great thing about tablet screens, that's why I haven't said phone games in this, mm. is that they're big and interactive. And For we'll sure. see a little bit now. But the there is some fine motor skill involved as well. Yeah, you know, and they'll learn that. You know as they go along. So preschool learning games for kids is actually the name of a game okay. that I highly recommend. It's a game that will help preschoolers particularly learn the alphabet, uh, basic stuff, learn the alphabet, counting numbers, stuff that they might learn from a TV show, you know, the, like kids TV shows will try yeah. and teach them how to count and spell and so on. Um, but having an interactive game means that there are active participants in the experience of learning. They love it, yeah. It, like in a way that you would only get to see or experience in the classroom. But now you can facilitate that. I'm not a preschool teacher. Yeah. That's, a, that's a whole nother skill set of, of its own. So to have a device that I can sit with my child and learn the ABCs with a technique that is approved by preschool uh, or used by preschool, preschool teachers yeah. means that I can give my child a head start. And, you, and you're leaning on kind of years of con like um, you know, composite learning here as well yeah. in the space. But what I love the most about it, it's one-on-one. -on -one. So when they're in learning in a class environment, it's one teacher to a group of kids in this space, one tablet, one child with a parent helping. Yes. That's very focused learning. I love that. So let, let's, let, me, let me demonstrate the next game. So the next okay. game is called Piano Kids. Uh -huh. um, and this is just demonstrates how it's nice to have a, a bigger screen to, to be able to do stuff. So um, if you want to learn some musical instruments early days, this is a great tool to do that. You can choose. Let me just turn this up so everybody can hear what's yeah. going on. Top so this is... Oh, so, yo, we can play... We can, do you want to play a song? What you can do is you can learn a song by clicking on song. Let's do... Which one? My old, name is... My, no, no Old MacDonald? Let's, yeah. let's do Old MacDonald Had a Farm because I haven't heard this in a long time. So... Oh, 
So, like... <laughs> so nice. that's a, so like I'm learning how to play a musical instrument, and you can choose between piano or uh, a guitar, and have. Oh. So so this music theory is really basic music theory, but a, a, a child jumping into this to be able to play it's an help instrument their brain understand and give them a head start yeah, when those cool. classes begin, which is great. And it's a good way for you to. It's indirectly you're going to monitor their screen time because there's only so much of that you can take as a parent. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> if you want to limit them to like half an hour, trust me, after half an hour Heads, of hearing them shoulders, play that, knees and toes, toes, knees and toes. Oh, no. There's a reason why the batteries keep disappearing out of a lot of the tech that my oh, kid no. has. Oh, I'm sorry, baby. The batteries got dead. I absolutely love that. It's fun and it's engaging. And it also, it, it, it kind of starts them on this digital path. And I'm so glad you said that we're not even going to be able to conceive of how they're going to be using their digital selves in the future. We just don't know. But one thing is absolutely absolutely certain they will be learning through digital platforms and mediums more than ever. So you've got to start them on that path. And these are fun for you and the kids. Yeah. That's super cute. And who wants smarter kids? All of us. All of us. Absolutely love that. Educational apps, games that can be used to educate your child and start them on their own digital journey. Oh, thank you, gentlemen. Well, when it comes to jungle oats, it is a breakfast option that provides the best for many inspired dishes. So this morning, we have Michaela in studio, and she's going to show us using instant oats to make caramelized banana and chocolate chip baked oats for breakfast. It is warm, it is gooey, it is full of heart, and you are going to love it. Michaela, I'm quite excited for this, because I think when it comes to breakfast ideas, I need to be inspired. I've been very boring with my eggs and my oats. Eggs and then my oats. I want more flavor, I want more variety. You could put those together. Eggy oats? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I'm gonna follow this recipe where I bake the oats. So what are you using then? So we have the banana flavor instant oats. Ooh. It does have a good banana smell. Oh. And then you also have a banana for us over there. So if you could start cutting that for us so that we could caramelize it on our pan that we okay. have going here. And uh, you want to start by using a cup of oats to a cup of milk. Cup of oats to a cup of milk. Even parts. Okay, so it's already measured out for us. And we have our milk. I feel like that doesn't go, so I'll eat We that have some now. brown sugar. That is not going in there. That is for the bananas. Um, we have some vanilla. Mm -hmm. We have some baking powder to add a bit of rice. You better stop me Thank before you. there's no more banana left for our breakfast. Do you like bananas? Love bananas. I know, bananas are a good fruit. Mm. Okay, and we have Bananas some... are incredible. I mean, I've been doing a lot of running, so before I run, half an hour before I eat a banana, I also love banana and peanut butter on toast. Oh, yes. Mm. And banana on pizza. I've never had banana. Mm, I've, 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 I've had that option. It's a bit sweet for me for a pizza. I do like the bit of um, sweet and salty. Mm. OK, so I'm just going to use a bit of that Sugar. in the caramelizing process and then add the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so you just want to mix them together. Wee! Just like that. Amazing. And you know what? Jungle Oats, it is high in energy, high in fiber, low in sodium and low GI, making it the perfect breakfast, keeping you fuller for longer. That's what you want. And Instant Oats has all of the goodness of regular oats, but just conveniently made up to be cooked quicker. Now, you can also use fresh bananas like we did if you prefer. Michaela, you've added some chocolate chips. Some dark chocolate chips, just dark. to keep it a little bit healthier for the mornings. And of course, it's going to add a pop of sweetness. 100%. And now we have our little ramekins and you just want to divide the little bit of a milky batter into there. Might want to use a spoon for this because I think it's going to drip down the sides a little. Here's a spoon for you. No, I did good. You okay. did good. Well done. And then of course, naturally, you want your bananas to caramelize. Mm -hmm. You'll preheat your oven over here. Yes, and then you just want to bake this until it's cooked and it's puffed up a little. That's why we had the baking powder in there. We want to get a little bit of volume. So we'll put this in the, in the, in the oven. I think they, is there something else in the oven happening there? Uh, we've, we've got something for our next segment, yeah. but then once those come out, they will look like the little bakes that we have over here. Look at that. 
Okay, I'm gonna use the spoon and actually tuck into one of them. We'll finish it off with um, the caramelized bananas that you're still mm -hmm. busy with. And then we can just tuck into this. There we go. And what you could do is pre-make them and then just um, don't cook them for too long because you don't want it too stodgy. Uh, leave it at like a slightly midway point and then just quickly put it in again when you reheat them. I love this. Um, the dark chocolate's coming through. Mm -hmm. I love that. It actually adds a little bit of a bitterness so it doesn't make it too sweet. I would love to add, if I may, tweak this recipe. It's just a little bit of cinnamon. Oh, yes, 100%. A tiny bit of cinnamon. Banana and cinnamon. Oh, it's a winner. So good. It is a winner. Well, to get this banana and chocolate chip baked oats recipe, Ooh. you can visit our website. That's expressoshow.com. Plus, when you buy any box of jungle oats, you can win your share of 2 million rand. Now, all you have to do is WhatsApp a photo of your toll slip to this number. It's a different one. It's 0721369927. And then you cross your fingers and we wish you all the best of luck because we will also put all of these competition details on our social media pages for you. So do go and check it out at Expresso Show. Um, that is what we are on social media. Michaela, how's those okay. bananas coming along? They're cooking. They're cooking, they're almost Ooh. done. Well, listen, this is a wonderful recipe. It is available on our website, expressoshow.com. What, Peter Glucken? Hello, do you know what Peter Glucken is? What is Peter Glucken? No one knows what Peter Glucken is. Peter Glucken is a natural fiber in jungle oats that helps lower cholesterol and keep hearts well. Yes. Jungle, do life with heart. Welcome back as we continue to celebrate the brilliance of our amazing young South African boys and men. And of course, Weinberg Boys High have produced some incredible sporting alumni and changed the face of school sports. Let's find out why. 
Yes, I'm Zanzi, thank you. Once again, we are live back at Weimar Boys High School, and I'm finding out so much about the incredible students here. And as promised, we are diving into culture as well as sport, and we're gonna do the sport thing right now. Now, of course, with Weinberg being so richly uh, cultivated when it comes to the history of sport, and they have achieved so much when it comes to sport in general, with so many accolades being achieved, as well as superstars coming out of this very house. But I've got some two future potential superstars that I'm gonna chat to right now. It's Olela um, Hoi as well, as Nicholas von Skalpfeig. These two gents are some incredible specimens which we're gonna chat about right now. They've been selected as deputy head boy and head boy for next year as well as achieved something prestigious when it comes to rugby. Gents, how are you doing this morning firstly? <laughs> so good. Don't be nervous, of course, you guys can relax. It's time to celebrate because you've done something exceptional. Firstly, let me talk to you about the rugby season. It's been a good one, right? How, how, how's things gone for you? Sum it up for me, man. Uh, I think the boys have just, um, we've worked very hard to get this far in our season and um, I think if we finish well and keep on grafting we'll have a very good season at the end. Yeah, keep grafting and keep doing the things. Nicholas, you've been grafting indeed, and I must say congratulations, because you guys have achieved something exceptional. Under 18, Western Province Academy selection. That must mean a lot to you. I mean, for many kids coming out here, that's like a dream, right? What does that feel like? Uh, speaking for me and Colella, I think that we're both honored and privileged to have played in the provincial side. Um, I think that um, it was nice to like measure ourselves against the best in the country and play with players we usually play against yeah. and be in the same team as players we play against that. Uh, this is the first time in history why I'm because it had nine provincial players in the SS School's oh, Catholic. Oh wow, nice. So it's a big, a big year and like a nice achievement to have. That is absolutely incredible, man. Well, Lena, maybe I can ask you something about the school because even when I was a kid, Weinberg had a strong brand and you guys really do things differently here. What do you think it is that sets you apart from the rest of the schools in the province? I think uh, the school is just different with the boys and how they're able to connect each other because I still remember my first time here. I was a bit nervous, a bit of a new boy, new no one at the school, but they yeah. were just loving and caring and they brought me into the school very well. And um, the way the boys connect, even out of school, it's just, um, I think it's great, and I'd love to be a part of that. And when it is true what they say, brothers in an endless chain. Uh, your brothers that are going forward, definitely. I feel like this is only the beginning for you. Nicholas, I want to ask you, though, because when I was at school, I tried to play sport, and I was, uh, for, for lack of a better term, a jock. But I really struggled to balance the academics and everything else that's going on here. Weinberg enforces such a good balance when it comes to stimulating you across the entire board, from culture all the way through to sport. How are you managing that first? I mean, doing something like achieving the accolades that you have, but at the same time still managing everything else. How's that going for you? How are you making sure that you upstall that belief? Um, it can be tough sometimes and overwhelming, like with so much things going on. Yeah. But at Weinberg, we are expected to be involved in the four pillars of Weinberg. Sports, um, academics, service and culture. Um, it can be tough, but over the years we've gotten used to it because they've like nurtured us and like helped us to get through like all the pillars and to be involved in everything and be like an all-round Weinberg man and all those sorts of all things. All-round man that can take on the world. Now, if you're wondering why we're standing here on this art piece, obviously we just referenced it, but at the same time, this has become symbolic of a perfect spot for all your potential head boys. This is where they take the picture. This is what is symbolizing that balance that the Weinberg students out here are just absolutely embodying and for these two gentlemen standing next to me right now I think for you Mzanzi you definitely want to keep your eyes on them these guys are going far they're going places and when it comes to rugby as well as culture and everything else I know that you guys are doing incredibly well so let me say congratulations once again for making the team and for the hard work you guys are putting into it and uh, of course I'm gonna get you uh, some time because you gotta go train you gotta go do some homework you gotta go do the work and everything else so you can do that I'm gonna carry on exploring more about what Weinberg has to offer right now this morning it's been an exceptional journey we're diving into culture we're diving into sport and we've also got something exceptional happening a little bit later on. So don't go anywhere, Mzanzi. Come back right here to Weimar Boys High School. We're going to be showcasing something special. We'll see you in just a bit. Oh, thank you, Raul. I hope you are enjoying your morning at Weinberg Boys High. And we are here back home going to do a little bit of workout. Now, this morning, I did say it's going to be a rugby-inspired one because when it comes to rugby and pretty much all sports, 
usually ends up winning the game. And the fitter you are, the more intense you can be with throughout the, you know, that 80 minute game that you end, end up playing. And that's why layering fitness drills into your training is also so important, not only for endurance, but for speed, strength, and explosiveness. And here to take us through a fitness routine that targets these goals, we have fitness coach and ultra marathon athlete, Kalman Valentino. You are back and I'm doing the workout with you. Yes, you are. We're having a leg day today. How are you doing? Good, good? I'm doing good. Should I be nervous for leg day? Um, you should be a little bit nervous. I saw how you were doing with that upward dog last time we were together. Okay, and it wasn't a success, so <laughs> let's see what we can do today. Yes. Um, have you played rugby before? I have not, but I've played touch rugby for fun. Oh, look at you. you know, when you have to like get the little yeah. tag or tag someone, that, that's as far work. as it's gone for yeah. me. Might say, so you haven't been tackled before. No, I haven't. Okay. Let's get into our exercises. So today we're going to focus on strength, we're going to focus on mobility as well. So we're going to use one exercise to focus on both of those elements. Okay. And then we're going to cool down with spinal twists and then, yeah, cat calves. Fan. So our first exercise is we're going to do a combination of squats and lunges. So we're going to go into a sumo squat, knees nice and wide, toes facing in the same direction as the knees. And you're going to drop the hips as low as you can. You're going to keep the shoulders in line with the hips here as well. You're going to go down low. And then we're going to go into a normal squat as we come up. Feet a little bit more wider than hip width apart. Sit it down. Then we're going to go into a curtsy squat. We're going to take that right leg behind the left leg. You're going to bring that right knee down towards the left heel. Up with your shoulders, gazing up. And then we're going to go into a reverse lunge, stepping back. Oh, this is and a power combo. Down. There we go. So this is giving us mobility here. When you widen up, you open up the hips to the side, external rotation in the hips. Let's repeat that again. This is our normal squat stance, which is also good for mobility, lower back here, working into the hammies as well. Internal rotation of the hips, curtsy squat. When you come down, keep the shoulders in line with the hips. And then when we step back, we focus on that hip flexor here. So the further you step back, the more you feel that hip flexor and the quad here on the left. Oh, it is burning. So that is like a combination should... of both mobility and strength at the same time. You can add weight if you want to load um, some extra weight onto it. <laughs> you can use the resistant is... band as well. Ah. This will help. You're also hitting all of the muscles in the glutes as well. Okay. Not just one muscle. Can we do the reverse side? I feel like just one okay. round of the, the opposite end. So we're going to go into squat. our sumo squat. Take it down. Normal squat, feet a little bit wider than hips width apart. Sit down. You also don't want the knees to stay a little bit behind the toes as much as you can. There we go, beautiful. Coming up, curtsy lunge, left leg steps behind the right. Bring that back knee down towards the right heel. And then we step it back with the reverse lunge. Shoulders in line with the hips. And then back into your normal squat. There we oh, go. This is a good combination. It really. So that's with the legs. So with rugby, you need to be, you need to have agility as well. You need to have power, quick response time. So this one is a bit more extreme. Okay. So you know, one, two, three. One, two, three. So can you do that with me? So opposite hand, opposite leg. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, on the twist. One, two, three. And then if you want to add that's some enough. power moves into it, one, two, three. Down we go. And up again. One, two, three. And okay. repeat. Okay, are we going to do burpee. that? Okay, let's do this. I'm going to just move the mat closer to you. Yeah. So we're going to go opposite hand, opposite yeah, yeah. hand. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, one. One, two, three. Down we go. Burpee. Up we go. Again. One, two, three. Down we go. Burpee. Up we go. One, two, three. There we go. <laughs> You How can make that. What would you do? Because that explosiveness definitely gets your heart rate up. Yeah, it does get your heart rate up. So I like to do like heat training. So I would do a minute of that and then do intense cardio for a minute and then a minute of the legs maybe doing the hips. Okay, you're super fit. I would do 20 <laughs> seconds. Yeah. And with rugby, of course, it's quite heavy on mobility. So it quite limits your ability because um, they do a lot of strength training. They do a lot of weight training. So we're going to come down for this one here. We're going to do a cat cow here. So let's release the spine, work the spine here because you need to be flexible with rugby. You have the ball, you twist to the side, you twist to the side. So you need that mobility in your upper back there. So hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. So we inhale, drop the belly, lift the hips, lift the chest. You're going to hug those elbows in. And then when you exhale, bring your chin towards your chest. And you want to gaze towards the belly button here, separating your shoulder blade to the back. Do it one more time. Inhale, lift it up. 
squeeze your shoulder blades together for me. And then exhale, chin to chest, round it out. And now to add to that, so when you inhale, you drop the belly. This is extending the spine here, working that plane of movement in the body. When you exhale, tuck in the belly button, breathe out. This is when the spine flexes here. So we're gonna work into the twisting plane of the spine here. You're gonna take your right hand behind your right ear. Inhale, elbow to elbow. When we exhale, we push the hips over towards the right and we open up, twisting the spine here. Let's repeat that one more time. Elbow to elbow, inhale, and exhale down. Oh, this is there amazing. You Thank you for giving me a teeny tiny taste of what is involved when it comes to the training and the fitness around, yeah. especially a rugby player. Very leg heavy, strong muscles, but recovery and the slow mobility movements also equally important. Kalman, thank you so much for joining Pleasure. us today. Wait. And I hope you enjoyed that workout. If perhaps you are a rugby player, you're probably laughing at us right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We have been loving connecting with the Weinberg boys, young men, and we have seen how are they preparing these young guys for the next step in their life. And a big start for me in the arts was this play, Little Shop of Horrors. Take a look. Oh, thank you so much, G. We're back at Weinberg High School right now, and we are talking about what I promised you is special. Yes, we're talking about a production that's about to be put on, and it's in conjunction with both Weinberg Boys High School as well as Weinberg Girls High School, and it is The Little Shop of Horrors. It's an exceptional play. It's a rock comedy set in the 60s, and if anybody's aware of it, it is so, so much fun, and I can't wait to see this rendition of it, but let's find out more about what's actually happening here. We've got some of the main cast, some of the lead members, and I I want to just discover some more of their roles, get an idea of what they're going to be doing, and maybe the significance of this play in general. So I'm going to go through the line. We've got a special uh, lineup of cast here. First up, we've got Benjamin. Benjamin, how are you doing, firstly? How are you? I'm good. I'm assuming that you've got something to do with being a florist. Is that correct? Yes. What's your character? Seymour is a quintessential nerd. Seymour, he's, yeah? Um, he's a lover of plants, hence he's working as an assistant florist. And um, when he discovers this blood-eating plant, he has to <laughs> battle between the two sides of whether it's worth sacrificing his morals for essentially fame and winning over Audrey, his oh, love. Oh, Simon's got a dilemma to deal yeah. with indeed. I love the prop though, it looks absolutely legit. <laughs> Even as the teeth would. Ulimo, maybe I can chat to you. I yeah. believe you are the florist shop owner? Yes. Yes, yes. yes what, is, what is your role here? What exactly is happening for so, you? So, Mr. Mushnik, as you know, he's the florist shop owner and he's your favorite Jewish grandpa. <laughs> and um, I see more as an enabling. And yeah, um, most of the characters always also develop around him, and he's just, you know, a very special character. It's kind of like the glue and everything, right? Yeah, he engages with indeed, almost everybody. Indeed, yeah. I love it. I can't wait to see it. Awesome. Nikita, you from Wamba Girls, right? Yes. How are um, you doing? I'm doing good. I ma made the way all across the road yeah. or something. It's quite close by, I believe. Yeah. Listen, so you playing Audrey and you're dating the dentist yes. who is a. Uh, Oren or Oren? Oren Scribbler, yes. What's happening in your, your side of the world? Okay. What are you dealing with in this place? Well, Audrey also works at the florist shop with Seymour and Mr. Mushnik, and she really looks up to Mr. Mushnik as a father figure in a way, and will like do anything to please him, as well as Seymour, as she has a major crush on him. <laughs> and then with Oren Scribello, again, at her core, she's really a people pleaser, and so she gets trapped into this abusive relationship with him, and just 
hot, has to figure out how to get out of it because she wants to be with Seymour. I love your knowledge and insight into the character. This is not just a high school production. This is on another level. I'm telling you, Zanzi, it's something you definitely want to get involved in. I'm going to chat the rest of the crew right now, but don't forget, this is actually happening right here at Clegg Hall from the 3rd to the 6th of August. So you definitely want to come through and check this production. I mean, look at who we're chatting to already. Look at the props. Look at the cast. It is exceptional. But I'm going to dive into some more of the cast right now. And someone you've already met is Tristan here, the baritone with a deep voice. But you're playing an interesting character right now. What's going on here? <laughs> so, I played the evil plant, Audrey 2. Ah, okay, yes, right, Audrey so 2, yeah? You got the smaller version of them over there, and this version goes on my head. <laughs> and basically, I just present um, a dilemma to Seymour, because I am I am a people-eating plant, and I just want food all the time. And I'm promising Seymour um, fame and success <laughs> in order for him to feed me people. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm the antagonist of the play and kind of just like I serve as like a spanner in the works of Seymour's life, you know, so he's trying to get success here yeah, and yeah, I'm just <laughs> I love it. This is going to be interesting. Our last new crew member here, which I want to chat to. Man, you're looking absolutely Thank you cool. So much. Uh, cool is the word I want to use. Now, Thank both you. of you are playing an interesting character, right? You both are playing Oren, who is obviously the notorious dentist yeah. around this whole play. Talk to me about the character and your positions in each, and why two of you are playing the character, maybe. So, Oren Scrivello, I would say, is a very sort of abusive, mean person, if that makes sense. Um, he gets off on causing pain to people, as he says in the production. Yeah. Uh, but he kind of like falls back on his profession as a cover up for it. So, oh, I can cause pain, I'm a dentist, sort of thing, you know. Um, I would say that Tristan and I have two very different dentists as well. Yeah. My dentist is more sort of Absolutely. like kept in. Uh, you can see like his aggression build up instead of just starting really mean okay. and loud. It's more like psychotic, if that makes sense. I got you, all right. Yeah. And then leading over to you, Tristan. Yeah, I think as Joel touched on it, like two very different dentists. Uh, I lean towards more of the madness side of things and I will have more of my aggression, more of the swag, more of the, you know, the coolness, as you can see uh, from the beginning. You know, he likes to build up a little bit, but uh, Oren is, is a nutter, really. In general, he's just a nutter. And um, it's just a really, really cool character that's quite fun to have. Oh, cool character. The props are looking exceptional. And you guys are definitely stars in the making. I can see that you already know your character. You've embodied the role. And for you, Mzanz, you definitely want of August right here at Clegg Hall. It's out at Wambo Boys High School. And of course, you can get your tickets at cricket.co.za. So make sure you book that and come see the future stars of Mzanzi. <laughs> Don't go anywhere, of course, though. We are going to be entertained by two more performances by that vocal ensemble. And let the magic continue. <laughs> Well, as you say to yourself, feed me, Seymour. Let's give you something massive to eat right now. This pazuki, okay, that's what it's called. Actually, a pazuki takes everything you love from traditional cookies and makes it massive. It's huge. This cookie is as big as a pizza and bakes in a cast iron skillet in your oven. It's awesome. It's slightly, I'm going to stress the word, slightly healthier as an alternative to your standard cookie base uh, using Be Well Cooking Olive Oil. But the balance of indulgence is easy equally maintained by topping this delicious giant chocolate chip skillet cookie with some ice cream. Only one person is crazy enough to attempt this on live TV. Michaela, are you ready? I am. This is very exciting. Is this a trend? On, this feels like a trendy TikTok-y type thing, or is this just from your mad don't scientist ask me those things, brain? Because I don't actually watch anything on TikTok. Well, you will now. This is going to become a trend, I have no doubt. This is awesome because we love cookies, and this is a cookie on a different level. And it's a level. sharing thing. You yes. know, people like sharing. I like that. Although, it's going to be tough because you're going to want to eat all of it yourself because it is so delicious. Okay, so I'm guessing we kind of start like we're making a cookie, yes? Yes. Ta-da. 100%. Okay, so, mm, mm -hmm. is this open? It is open! <laughs> okay, so we have our Be Well olive oil. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just adding the sugar in so that I can use this as a one cup measure. Okay. Okay, dice, dice. Dice. There you go. Golden brown. Nice. Beautiful. Okay. And you just want to mix it all together. We have some other sugar over there. Okay. 
bring it all together. I love it. And we use the generous helping of our pure cooking olive oil, the Be Well cooking olive oil, great for everyday cooking and baking. Ideal to use at high temperatures, and it really does make every dish acceptable, uh, exceptional and acceptable. <laughs> it's 100% olive oil, which also means that it is naturally cholesterol-free and high in monounsaturated fats, which is great. It has a high smoking point, and that uh, means that it can be heated without the oil breaking down and becoming the wrong kind of fat, which we like. Nice. Okay. Okay, so we have some flour, some salt, some bicarb. And it's looking like a normal cookie batter, yeah. It is pretty much a normal cookie batter. I think it's just a little bit less um, sticky. Okay. And condensed. Um, so you just want to mix that all together. <laughs> yeah. And it's going to make a delicious dough, which we will save some for you, Zoe. Yes. So you can eat some dough. We'll wait until we put the chocolate chip cookies in there. And I like the fact that you highlighted this as being a social thing. It's going to be so much fun to make with your kids. 100%. If you've got kids who love baking and like to get involved, the joy of baking is that there is the lesson in patience, yes, because you've got to create and then you've got to wait. <laughs> and that's a big thing. But then you get the reward. And a reward that you've had a hand in creating. There's something so special about that. And it means it can be really rustic. <laughs> and this kind of lends itself to, to kind of a rustic vibe, I think, which is cool. So take the pressure off yourself as a baker. Do something that's entry level where it's not so demanding. The outcome is going to be awesome regardless of how it looks, I think. And also... Less cleaning up this way, because you know when you're busy making cookies with kids, it gets a bit messy. It gets everywhere. So now you just tell them, cool, um, we're going to put it in the skillet, and then we just, we're just going to watch it rise. <laughs> and it's going to do its thing. <laughs> yeah. But it's already looking delicious. And, and we haven't shied away from, like, proper chocolate chip. No, there. because like, these are going to get, in. like, all ooey-gooey. Mm. And then you're going to get that like crispy caramelization on the outside. And because of the, the sugar content, a nice toffiness, I like that. That's cute. How cute is it? It's very cute. You could go massive. You could go kind of medium-sized. We're doing the cute Beautiful. one right now, then. Oh, that okay. dough does look delicious. You could just put that dough in a packet, put it in the fridge and chow it. So while we finish off filling our beautiful skillet, here's the good news. With um, Be Well at the moment, you can win big, and I stress big, not just the size of these cookies big, but massive. They are giving away 150,000 Rand as a grand prize, oui. and you stand a chance of winning your share of 50,000 Rand as well. All you have to do is purchase your favorite Be Well product, take a photo of yourself and your Be Well product, and then send a picture of that um, to any of the Be Well social media platforms, or you can send it to their WhatsApp line, which is 060-582-3678, along with your name and your contact number, Please don't forget, and those uh, terms and conditions can be found on the Be Well website. And there it is, our skillet Cute. is full. And then that pops into the oven and yes. ta-da! But also, if you're using a skillet with a wooden handle, you just want to make sure that it's covered okay. um, with some foil because uh, it might set alight. Okay, you don't yeah. want a, a smoked cookie. We are looking for a beautifully <laughs> baked cookie. Absolutely spectacular. Go and there, taste it. Yeah, you look at the end results. I'm shifting across to go and taste our cookie and hopefully this has inspired you. If you're going to create something bigger than ours, please post a picture of it so we can see. But this looks absolutely amazing. Mm.
Teflon color stay matte like crayon. Play it up. Bold matte color goes on as easy as a crayon. Feels barely there. Super soft, 12 rocket poppin' shades. New Revlon color stay matte like crayon. Wanna play? It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back. It is your feel-good breakfast show indeed. Can you believe it's Thursday? Mm -hmm. And what a way to celebrate our claim, Fred Uffman, with a beautiful performance from the Weinberg Boys High School Ensemble. They're putting together Little Shop of Horrors, and we're going to get a taste right now. Oh, thank you so much, Chi and Zoe. And now I'm seated right here in Clegwell out at Weinberg Boys High School. I can feel the tension. I can feel the nerves right now. And as promised, I'm about to give you a little bit of a teaser. And that's for the 3rd to the 6th of August. It's the show happening right here at the Clegwell. It's in conjunction with Weinberg Boys and Weinberg Girls High School. And you can get those tickets at cricket.co.za. But for now, without further ado, here's a little bit of a teaser of what you can expect on the night. Enjoy. first day of the month of September, in an early year of a decade not too long before our own, the human race suddenly encountered a deadly threat to its very existence. And this terrifying enemy surfaced, as such enemies often do, in the seemingly most innocent and unlikely of places. of August right here at Clegg Hall. It's going to be exceptional. Go find it at cricket.co.za and let the magic continue. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! Yeah! Oh, 
Oh, Raul, it looks like you should be on the stage there with them. What an amazing performance from the Weinberg Boys High performance. It's time for us to quickly touch on those national headlines one last time for this morning. Starting with national news, some 600 Defence Force members from South Africa and the US have collaborated to bring medical services to a Richards Bay community on the KZN North Coast. The area has become inaccessible to civilian healthcare workers due to the high crime rate. The joint exercise was aimed at delivering humanitarian aid to civilians. General Michael Natali of of the US forces who is a medical doctor said during the exercise more than 3,000 people were seen also for dental and eye checkups as well as veterinary care for some 4,000 animals. Staying with local news, ESCOM has said its energy transition plan may require as much as 1.2 trillion rand in investment for new general generation and distribution capacity with bulk of the money expected to come from private investors. The state-owned power utility, which is saddled with 396 billion, dollars, billion rand rather in debt, plans to tap private investors for the 990 billion rand it needs to found new generation capacity capacity and shift to cleaner energy sources by 2030. That is according to the general manager for the strategy and planning. ESCOM also needs 300 billion rand to improve its air quality over the next decade. Moving to news abroad, French President Emmanuel Macron has strongly criticized African leaders' response to the Ukraine war during a media conference in Yonde in Cameroon. Macron hit out at, and I quote, the hypocrisy, particularly on the African continent, end of quote, that denied the Ukraine conflict as a war. Some African countries have held back from outbreak, outright criticizing Russia's aggression in Ukraine. The French president began a three-country tour of Africa Africa on Monday with food security, militant violence and France's relation with the continent expected to dominate his talks with African leaders. And the space jacket worn by Buzz Aldrin while flying to the moon has sold at New York auction for $2.8 billion. Adorned with a US flag and NASA logo, Aldrin wore the white in, um, the white in flight jacket while hurling through space in Apollo 11's command module, Columbia. It's one of 69 personal belongings that the 92 year old has decided to sell. The jacket becomes the most valuable American space artifact ever sold on auction. Auction. Aldrin traveled to the moon in July 1969 and is the only living member of the mission's three-man crew. And bringing it back home, Banyana Banyana's magnificent victory in Rabat beating Morocco to bag the Women's Soccer Africa Cup is still fresh in our memory. But already there are lively discussions on how our national netball team, the African champion, is going to fare in the 16th Netball World Cup tournament in Cape Town from the 28th of July to the 6th of August next year. Our hopes for this exciting event have been boosted by a 33 by 9 meter mural at the Langa Indoor Sports Centre near Cape Town International's airport, the first of several that the mother city is planning to commission over the next 12 months to mark 365 days to the Nepal World Cup. The imposing artwork by local artist Shum, uh, Shum Buza Salman, as well as supported by emerging artist Ayabonga Ntongwane, is visible from the N2 highway. Cape Town Mayor Jordan Hill Lewis said preparations are in full swing for instance for netball facilities in Scottsdean, Ravensmead, Delft, Guguletu, Sir Lowry's Pass, Strandfontein, Sarepta and Mitchell's Plain have already been upgraded at a cost of some six million rand and he added I quote who knows hopefully we'll see our netball team become world champions on home soil well we certainly hope so that's a wrap on your morning headlines here's a final look at your sport Thanks so much. So let's start with cricket. Unfortunately, not the best news from a South African perspective, as Johnny Bairstow was the star. He hit 90 from 53 deliveries, as well as a quick fire 52 from 18 from Moeen Ali. That were the catalyst for a 41 run win for England in their first T20 against South Africa yesterday. The host posting a massive 234 for six, thanks to those two knocks, so with the Proteas left to rue some shoddy fielding, dropping no less than five catches. Lungi and Giri did shine with the ball 
all, he was the pick of the voters for South Africa, taking five for 39. In response, a brilliant knock of 72 of just 28 from Tristan Stubbs, and then 57 from Reza Hendricks was sadly not enough for the visitors, as Richard Gleeson took three for 51 to compound that loss. And the second T20 takes place in Cardiff later tonight. Then staying in the UK, the Commonwealth Games headed our way, and with the opening ceremony taking place tonight in Birmingham, Team South Africa have been forced to a number of changes across a number of sporting codes. So let's start with cricket. Trisha Chetty, she'll be missing the games through injury, adding to the loss of Marazan Cup, a massive one due to personal reasons. Then Olympian and Tour de France rider Nick Lamini, he's missing out through injury, with Callum Ormiston now replacing him on the bike. Then para-athletes and titan in the sport, Ernst van Dijk, is out injured, and he'll be replaced in the para-marathon by Tian Bosch, while triathlete Nicholas Quinette, who's injured, will also be an absentee. Then in the 200 metres, sprinter Lukolo Adams, he's also been withdrawn from the games due to fatigue. And on to football and a story that's been looked at from a few different perspectives this week. So let's bring some clarity. As uh, SAFA President Dr. Yaru, uh, Jani, Danny Yordan rather, had tried to do as he clarified the issues of bonuses for Banyana Banyana and also what will happen with the prize money awarded by CAF. So the prize money of 8.4 million rand will be paid to SAFA and many assumed it would then be added to the 9.2 million rand in bonuses promised by SAFA. However, that is not the case. Speaking to Robert Morales, on Marawa Sports Worldwide, Jordan explained that while Banyana are guaranteed a bonus of 400,000 from SAFA, the Football Association will receive the prize money from CAF, and that money will then go into the budget for the bonuses, expenses, and more. While at the same time, President Cyril Ramaphosa has used the opportunity to say that the team deserve to be paid as much as their male counterparts. So we'll certainly watch that space over the coming months. And then finally, on to more controversy in sports and more money. The 2023 Live Golf Schedule will not compete with the majors, the international team events or heritage events. This is according to the event organisers. So next year, 48 players will play in 14 tournaments with a $405 million, $100 million in combined purses. Unbelievable. With the choice of playing in the more traditional tournaments as well. And the announcement comes as the third tournament of the Breakaway Series gets underway today. That event in New Jersey is one of the eight tournaments in the inaugural year of the controversial series that I have a feeling is only going to grow in momentum. But that's where we leave our Thursday morning sports. Of course, we'll prep you ahead of the weekend tomorrow. But right now, let's get you prepped for the roads with some traffic. Thank you, Graham. Well, starting off with traffic in KZN Camperdown, there's an accident near Umlaas Road and another near the Linfield off-ramp, and that's onto N3 West on your way to Peter Maritzburg. Please approach with caution. Moving to Gauteng uh, in Pretoria, there's a stationary vehicle on the N1 southbound after the Guard Fountain Road. Now, that left lane's been affected. Please add some extra travel time to avoid any delays. And back in KZN Umschlanga, there are ongoing delays on the N2 southbound after the Umschlanga ramp with a stationary vehicle currently obstructing that left lane. Please make sure you drive carefully. And that's a wrap on your traffic. Let's take a final look at your weather. And we kick off this morning with some truly unsettling news for the environment and conservation in general from the DRC, that's the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Now, despite growing pleas from climate change activists, the DRC says it's moving forward with plans to auction off a vast majority of oil and gas drilling blocks located in the country's rainforests and peatlands. Now, the Ministry of Hydrocarbon said 27 oil, three gas blocks would be auctioned and in Increase from the 16 blocks the country initially committed to in May. The, block, the blocks include areas that reach into the Virunga National Park, a sanctuary for endangered mountain gorillas in the east of the Congo. The DRC has more than 27 million people, including some 3 million children, who do not have enough food to feed themselves. A petition signed by more than 100,000 people is calling on the president of the DRC to end the development of the new oil and gas fields in the country. 
Now for your final weather update for today, we also take a look at those sunrise views. Wayne Adams from George shared this one, showcasing the pink sky, giving us a northern lights feel with an abandoned cottage in the background. And then Kiara Govender sent us this heavenly view out in Chatsworth in KwaZulu-Natal. Look at how still the sun is this morning. Michelle captured this spectacular view, the reflection of her car window. Look at the ray of colors and those palm trees reflecting. And finally, we have one from Nima in Berga that is a beautiful, refreshing photo of the morning sky in the Eastern Cape. Well, don't forget to share your sunrise views with us. You can do so on our WhatsApp line. That number is 063-408-8863. Here's a final look at your temperatures. In Polokwane, your temperatures range between 6 and 21. Mbumbela, 9, 23. Pretoria, 8, 22. Johannesburg, 7, with a high of 20. If you're in Mahiking, 10 is your low, 23 your high. Klaarsdorp, 8, 21. Kimberley, 11 with a high of 24. Some rain and thunder for Bloemfontein today, 6, 21. Richards Bay, 15 with a high of 23. Peter Maritzburg, 11, 23. Durban, 16, 23. Mtata, 11 with a high of 19. East London, 17 with a high of 23. Craddock, 8, 22. Kabecha, 13 with a high of 21. George 9 reaching a high of 21, sunny in Cape Town, 12's your low, 21 your high, Worcester 7, 24, Sutherland your temperatures range between 0 and 17 and Uppington expect a warm sunny day, a low of 9, a high of 29 degrees Celsius. And that's where we leave your weather on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Come a little closer, man. If you thought our pazuki was crazy, try some pancake tacos with a beautiful honey yogurt dressing out for size. Going to be delicious. And then, of course, we're going to continue to connect with the amazing groups um, of guys and girls in the ensemble at Weinberg Boys performing um, all kinds of amazing talents and reconnect with their rugby team as well. So don't stray too far. What are you making? Mmm. Do you own your skin? Do you wear it bravely, even when others try to dim its glow? Does it represent your strength, your heritage, or does it express your brave and unconditional love? New Look Ingrams, your skin, your brave.
decadence of double cream bliss from Clover. Yogurt has never been so irresistible. Made with love by Clover. Oh, welcome back as we continue to celebrate exceptional young people. Of course, we put it to you guys this morning. What is your favorite extramural activity? We've been loving embracing what the Weinberg boys uh, guys are doing along with the Weinberg girls, of course, in Little Shop of Horrors. We've got their amazing ensemble cast. We've connected with their rugby players. Clearly, they are very busy after school. So we put it to you guys, 063-408-8863. Drop us a voice note and let us know what your, uh, let us know what your favorite extramurals are. And we're going to hear from Colleen first, what she got up to. Good morning, Expresso. Colin van Tjavi. So, jylle bring nou lekker memories terug vir my. Myne was tats rugby en sokke. Because, ja, en ek wil nie saam met die girls gespeel het, only with the boys. So, ja, daar was my extra mural activities. Oh, Colleen, I'd love to know why. Sokke en tats rugby. With boys. With boys. Must be with boys. I love it, Colleen. Let's hear from Samantha. What was her favourite extra mural? My favourite extramural had to have been hockey. I had the most amazing coach and I even came back and assisted a year after I'd left school because I just loved it so much. Let it go, let it go. Now, I also, I love it, absolutely love school sport. Roshni, what was your favourite extramural activity? I loved going for drum majorettes and playing netball. I wish all the schools will bring all these extramural activities back. Completely. Michaela Tien, what was your favorite extramural activity? Um, so in my youth, I actually trained to be a professional ballet dancer. Wow. So my whole life, my only extramural was, was going to art uh -huh. and then doing ballet. And of course, now you're, you're a prima ballerina. No, you're an artist, um, uh, which is yeah. awesome. And I can hear the sounds of cooking. And of course, that was obviously a love and a skill that was developed at some point. Yes. Um, now, I love the fact that you get to play that out on our screen. Now, here's the good news. If you are looking for a reason to skip the YouTube utensils um, with your pancakes and make it a little bit more handsy we have got the perfect recipe for you today we are talking about pancake tacos with a beautiful honey yogurt dressing and we've got some fruit stewing as we speak this is an awesome one i love it it's wholesome it's nutritious and it's delicious uh Yes, 100%. And who doesn't love a good old pancake? Exactly. I know these look like flapjacks. It's quite a contentious thing, okay? Oh. Is it a flapjack? Is it a pancake? Okay. Oh, that is a tough one. It depends what country you're in, I suppose. Yeah, 100%, because in America, that is a pancake. Yeah, and a, and a pancake that we assume is a pancake would be a crepe, hey? Yes. Which would be thinner. Very, very thin pancake. Exactly. It doesn't matter. Whether it's thick or it's thin, you can make a taco out of it and you can fill it with deliciousness. A taco. A taco. A taco, huh? It's a taco. In Barcelona. Okay, so you, you've got the wet ingredients going on here. What did yes. you put in? What's going on? So I have some milk. Uh, we have some oil. We had two eggs. We have some vanilla essence. Nice. And then we have our flour. So it's a bit of a contentious um, decision whether you want to do wet into dry or dry into wet. Wet, okay. Um, it Does it really me. matter? <laughs> I find that if I do dry into wet, it kind of makes less spillage for me. Okay. I don't know. Maybe it's that's more manageable. just me. Okay. Yeah. So find the way that works best for 100%. you. 100%. That is ideal. And there is some latitude in baking. Don't mess with the, the ingredients. Don't mess with the amounts. Yeah. But in terms of the process, you can find the way that works best for you. Okay, I get that. So we've got our beautiful fruit stewing there. And we've gone with some apple, I think. Apple and pear. No, it's, it's just pear. pear. Just pear. Oh, lovely. It's seasonal mm. right now. And so. it's, that is a kind of a winter warmer kind of fruit as well. I like the fact 100%. that this is, this is real comfort food. Which is like what we want to go with today. Mm, I'm loving it. Okay, so our wet ingredients are ready and now becomes the yes. real test. With, um, and just incidentally, with the stewing of the fruit, what else did you put in there? Uh, there was some butter and um, some brown sugar and you just wanted to let it caramelize. But okay. um, I kind of need the stove top right now, so bye. Cheers. Okay, but we get the idea. Yes. All right. 
here comes the business end. This is where I normally fall short. Do you want a spoon? You kind of need to use that spoon, so I'm just gonna, You're gonna pour it on it. in. I love it, and here that sizzle. Ooh. And we're going for quite sizable flapjacks here. Of course. Um, absolutely. Because you need to fill these, so... They need to be robust and they need to have a bit of size. And then, of course, we're going to finish it off with our beautiful Clover Bliss a Double Cream, which we are mixing through with a bit of honey and we've walnuts. got some roasted walnuts, mm. which are delicious. So will we put this all together? Um, I think with the use of the Clover Bliss a Double Cream plain yogurt in this recipe, you are guaranteed some delicious flavors, thanks to the creamy indulgence. And you can use any of the Clover Bliss yogurt flavors, one that you like the most, use it for this recipe, and you can use any fruit that are in season for the filling, hence why we have gone with pear, which are just so great right now. But if you've missed any of the steps and you want to see that finished product, take a look at this. Mm. Oh, well, listen, it's been a jam-packed day from delicious recipes to bringing you the best that the Weinberg Boys High School has to offer, including Ryle, who is there at the moment coming to you live, and they've got another performance for us, so stay tuned. Thank you so much, Zozo. We are back right now and about to dive into another performance by Weinberg Boys High School Ensemble. Now, this one is something special because these boys not only do they perform at Eisted Fits and concerts, but they perform all across the community, serving their magic and making so many people smile. And some of those groups of people that are smiling is an old age home, and this is a hot topic that they've requested specially for this group. Now, this song titled uh, Shaboom by J. Keys is a hot favorite, and it's here for you to enjoy. Enjoy. Take it away, boys. <laughs> If you do what I want you to, baby, we'd be so fine. I know life could be a dream. Shaboom if I could take you up in paradise up above. Shaboom if you would tell me I'm the only one that you love. Well, life could be a dream, sweetheart. And I'll be ding dong, a lang, a lang, a lang. But life could be a dream. Shaboom if I could take you up in paradise up above. If you would tell me I'm the only one that you love, your life could be a dream, sweetheart. Hello, hello again, shaboom, and hope that we meet again. Life could be a dream, shaboom, all my precious plans would come true. Shaboom, if you would let me spend my whole life loving you, life could be a dream, sweetheart. Something is on my mind. Should we do up? 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 Should we do
your life could be a dream. Shaboom, if I can take you up in paradise up above. Shaboom, if you would tell me I'm the only one that you love. Whoa. Life could be a dream, sweetheart. And on a ding dong, a land, a land, a land. Shaboom, shaboom. Yeah, da 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 Shaboom, shaboom. Yeah, da 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 Shaboom, shaboom. Yeah, da 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 Shaboom. Boom, shaboom, shaboom, shaboom. Yeah, da 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 Shaboom, shaboom. Yeah, da 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 Shaboom, shaboom. Yeah, da 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 Shaboom. Boom, shaboom, 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 shaboom
Oh, uh, thank you, G-Man. Well, you know what? When it comes to Woolworths, they pride themselves on being the best local supporter with 90% of their produce grown locally by local support, well, farmers. And they really have been, you know, shared, farmers that share their values, the same focus on quality as well as their obsession with sustainability. And Raul recently took a trip to Limpopo to find out everything about Love Local. What is up, Mzanzi? I think you can definitely agree with me when I say that local is definitely lacquer. Now, if there is one brand that does love local as much as I do, then it's got to be Woolworths. Up to 90% of their produce is grown locally. Now, this is all being done by a supplier network of farmers that are ensuring that they share the same values. This is focusing on sustainability as well as the obsession with quality. So listen to this. I am right here at a farm near you. To find out more about Love Local and the incredible partnership between the Indigo Food Farming Group as well as Woolies, which has been taking place for over 39 years. I've got to be honest with you, it is an absolute honor to be in a place like this. It's so raw, it's so authentic, and I feel like I'm as close as I've ever been to fresh produce. But more importantly, there's a lot going on here. And one of those things that's been happening for a couple of decades now is the fact that you have these incredible relationships with some of your suppliers. Why exactly is that so important? We are a brand that uh, supports local. Local means we know every lay of the land, and we work closely with our supplier representative to bring about quality, innovative product for our customers and grown in a farm near your area in perfect environment to bring you the best quality experience. Now I've heard about the Clement Golds, I've tasted them and I, I know working on the show even I've seen how much you can do with it and how often do you literally get to come up to a, a tree like this and literally pick up a perfect fruit and uh, taste it at the same time. For me I've got to find out first how good it tastes. I shouldn't have even asked. It tastes like absolute magic. I'm just dying to know how on earth it is that you are able to find out and ensure that right throughout the process, from your supplier all the way to the end product, that this thing remains as good as it tastes and you are ensuring that obsession with this quality. We carefully select some of the best varieties uh, together as a partnership and uh, once a variety like this one in this case um, is approved, we rigorously test and, 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 and analytically test the fruit to ensure that it's the best eating quality and only then when the fruit is ready for harvesting then they can start harvesting and supply the fruit uh, to us. And we keep the fruit at the right uh, perfect temperatures to ensure that it, it remains uh, fresh and, and quality remains good. And uh, through the supplier we are able to trace from the woolly store back to the farm uh, where the product has been uh, harvested from which block. Dietrich, how are you doing? Welcome, good to have you here. Man, thank you so much for having me. Honestly, my appreciation for fruit has just leveled up, just seeing what goes into making all this magic. But maybe I can ask you a bit more about what actually Glees the Business is all about. We specialize in the farming and packing of fruit. Quality is our absolute focus. We have farms in the northern part of the country as well as the southern part. The reason for this split over an area is to guarantee quality fruits over a longer period that the climate suits the production. Oh, I love that. Now, on top of this, you've also had a relationship for so long when it comes to Woolworths and what was established with the Esser family way back when in 1983, I believe. Now, this long-term relationship has been incredible, but in your opinion, what is it that has made it so strong and what is it about the two parties that complement each other so well? I think we share the same ethos and values in how we conduct our business on a daily basis. Our slogan is growing for gold. That is what we focus on and we believe that matches well with Woolworths. That comes down to quality and excellence on a daily basis. Our main brands are Clement Gold, which is our premium Mandarin brand, and Lemon Gold, which is our seedless lemon brand, which is exclusively sold in Woolworths. I'm learning a lot about this Farming for the Future initiative, which I absolutely love. And for the last three to five years, you've been rated as very good. So well done on that firstly, but I want to find out exactly what it is that allows you to achieve that and what all encompasses this beautiful program and this beautiful process that you're involved in. All of our pack houses has a solar system implemented as alternative energy that's also environmentally friendly. 
When it comes to the use of water, we as farmers have a big responsibility to make sure it's done responsibly. We do so by implementing the best systems that make our irrigation practices efficient without wasting any water. When it comes to pest management, we believe integrated systems are the best approach. That's why we use beneficial insects that naturally cure our problems and we don't need to use excessive pesticides to guarantee a clean fruit. Our objective through uh, the Farming for the Future program is to reduce the impact our food uh, production and food processing has on the environment through the responsible use of all agricultural inputs um, and uh, natural resources like soil and water. The tree is given the exact amount of water that it needs, yes, the, amount of, the exact amount of fertilizer, and uh, the netting here helps to reduce sunburn, and it also allows, it's not a blocked net, so it allows natural birds to come in uh, and fly around. So it's a, a perfect environment for these plants and for this lemon goat. Stay tuned to find out more about Indigo Fruit Farming's employee and community upliftment initiatives. Ninety percent of Woolworths produce is grown locally by a network of supplier farmers who share their values, their focus on sustainability and their obsession with quality. Shop Love Local, grown on a farm near you. Oh, thank you, Raul, seeing him there amongst the Clement Golds. How amazing. And, of it course, happy we will place. be bringing you more on that a little bit later. Yeah, undoubtedly. They do get it right. I love it when it works for the community, it works for the environment, and it works for us in our kitchen as well because the Clement Golds are coming front and centre in our next beautiful recipe. We'll see you in a moment. You are just in time because earlier we learned from Raul that the sustainable, all about we need to know about sustainable farming practices and what indigo fruit farming does to ensure that they deliver Woolworths with exceptional quality Clement Golds. It's also time to learn more about their community upliftment initiatives. So we just touched down in the Litsitele region, which is known as somewhat of a citrus haven. And I'm out here to meet Fan, who's the general manager of the Indigo Farming Group. I'm gonna find out more and obviously chat to the man himself. So, my man, how are you doing? Fine in yourself, <laughs> Ryle. So good, it's so good to meet you, obviously. Beautiful office, I must say. No, yeah, I'm complaining no, about we this. enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, the Indigo Fruit Farming Group is doing some incredible work when it comes to community upliftment, right? So what sort of initiatives have you got going in the area? These farms are leased from different communities. Um, Dari Farm is leased from the Butler Beni CPA and the Sarala Estate Farm just up the road here that's leased from um, the Mamatola people. So we use internships and that is the opportunity that we use to, to scout, look for talent. Uh, we screen uh, prospective candidates, they come here. Uh, we interview them and then they actually work on the farm while completing some unit standards in agriculture. We evaluate the interns and that's where we scout for talent. 
uh, looking for scouts, uh, managers and supervisors. One of our other initiatives is uh, supporting creches and daycare. Maradari supports the Ledikwa drop-in center and Sarala the Saliki daycare. We support those with uh, monthly food donations and the staff in Litsatele can also enroll their kids in the Duroi nursery creche where they receive two well-balanced meals, meals a day and also have a qualified teacher that can teach them up to great RR. One of our Mandela Day projects is where we get ladies on the farm to knit beanies and then we give those beanies uh, to the kids in the creches. Well, it's fun. One of the most incredible opportunities is not only seeing the produce here but also seeing the community and the opportunity they have to grow within this company. I think it's absolutely exceptional. So we have a very great example of that. Uh, someone that have started down the ranks, uh, been with the company for many years. So let me introduce you to Coach Longu. Finding out about you, I've heard some very, very good things. I've been very excited to chat to you. You're somewhat of like the queen of the farm in a way, but more importantly, your journey is what I absolutely love. So Kate, you started off as just an intern out here, and now you've worked your way up all the way to a production manager. Now that's incredible, uh, just on its own, but what exactly is it about this journey that you've loved so much, and what inspired you to pursue a career in agriculture? I, my journey started in 2008, while I was the intern at Indigo Fruit Farming. Then I started with uh, general farm work from the I proceeded to be a, a supervisor. And then later on I became the 2IC for Leeds Farm. 2017 I took over Maridari Farm and became the production manager. Then as I as a black female I saw it as an opportunity and a challenge to be part of it. Someone can say that being the production manager when you are a female is quite difficult but for me I find it not that difficult actually if I can say it that way because I've realized that Working with people, what they only need from you is that you, you need to respect them, you need to understand them, and you need to treat them fairly. So that's more like it. Honestly, Kate, your journey sounds incredible. And I think for anybody out there that's going to be watching this right now, and for you, Mzanzi, this is definitely inspiration. So thank you for what you're doing. It really is astounding to see all the incredible work that's being done by this organization. But what is it about you that you value the most about working at Indigo Food Farming? Um, for me, when I started working here at Indigo Fruit Farming, I have realized that Indigo is having the different way, the way they are working with their employees. And myself, I find that we are being taken good care of. And there's always an opportunity for us to grow and to advance our careers. So Woolies definitely supports Love Local. And we should definitely come together and support our local farming community by ensuring that we understand where our food comes from. So what does that mean? It means shop local produce grown in a local climate, grown by local farmers and brought to a local retailer near you. That's Woolies. <laughs> Ninety percent of Woolworths produce is grown locally by a network of supplier farmers who share their values, their focus on sustainability and their obsession with quality. Shop Love Local, grown on a farm near you. Oh, well, with Woolies, you've got to love local. And you know what? We have our very own Clem and Gold in the kitchen. You just told me. Oh, no. It doesn't get more classic than a crepes Suzette. Uh, this Moorish dish stars Woolworths frozen pancakes, first major tick and a delicious sticky Clem and Gold trademarked toffee sauce. Take it away, Clem. You are our Clem and Gold. Tra trademark. Uh, tra trademark. Are you trademark? You are. I am. Did you have to sell your trademark when they developed the Clem and Gold? I've got a Clem and Gold tattoo over here and a Woolworths tattoo over here. <laughs> I'll show you guys later. It's a big Clem and it's Gold, It's a big... So you're giving me <laughs> very... like a watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> but it's gold. Your outfit's giving me my Ami Vice vibes. Good. Okay. I'm bringing the sunshine with this dish. So you need to complete your outfit. You need oh, to put these on. Oh, thank you. You need to put these on. I'll be protections. Safety first. Yo, how, how? Okay, our mm -hmm. protection. So you got that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna bring the sunshine right now. And I do feel like this is how we kind of embrace the season when it comes to winter. Because when it's winter, we know climate goals are coming out. Please, and it feels like summer, because it's, it's kind of weird. Like my brain wants to short circuit when you get fruits that seem so summery because they are, are sun ripened and they are delicious. And these are picked at that 
perfect to almost to the millisecond. They are at their perfect, perfect picking Someone point. Someone literally stands there. And just waits. Wait. <laughs> Touch. <laughs> engage. Oh, boom. boom. That's it. That's how it happens. Result, then you get these beautiful, beautiful Clement Golds and Lemon Golds. Yes. Um, and you know by now that this is one of my favorite flavor profiles. If you can curd it up, brilliant. If you're going to add that citrusy vibe, Brilliant. This is so nice to me. And with the crepe Suzette, this is one of those that I can eat literally the whole pile. The whole pile. Yeah. And because the crepes are so thin, you're kind of like, you're allowed to. You're yes. allowed to. Right. Little so installments of joy. I love it. You know, it. so we're going to do a little bit of, like you said, a um, little bit of that sunshine coming, a little bit of a curdy vibe, but not the extensive way of like, Properly doing the curd to get yeah. that thick. We're gonna we're gonna do a little shortcut because okay. we're gonna our crepes is yet to need that sauce. So yes. butter goes in first, and don't play. Get the salted butter. Salt and desserts we know yeah. you need it. It activates the sweetness it in does. a weird way. It actually kind of it does boosts that profile. I mean the nice thing here is because I love pancakes so much, mm -hmm. but I honestly I made fifty. Did one turn out all right? No. no. And we still ate them all, you know, but I just can't. I don't know why I cannot make a pancake. So hence being able to buy a pack of frozen pancakes, a stack like this is like heaven for me. Yeah, it I, takes the trauma out of me. The trauma. <laughs> it is, I, I actually do have trauma me. because I used to do a six o'clock breakfast run <laughs> at, a, at a restaurant and I Ooh, had to make about buddy. 300 pancakes in one morning and it's always on a Friday morning. I mean, where was Willie's with us then? Oh, Yo. exactly, buddy. Okay. okay, so what's going in there? We've got some zest. Get some zest in there. To start. Also, just like you said, um, salt awakens the flavor. So does lemon zest. And we know this. That's why I add acid to things. A dish when it's finished, it'll squeeze of lemon on there. Boom, it just brings out the flavor so we're gonna get that zest in there as well that's gonna go in and it's gonna make a huge difference okay Perfect. This, it's, it's quite a heady sauce. It needs to hit the old factory right. senses as well. It's not just a flavor bomb it's or not. flavor bazooka. And I like this. The sauce needs to be a little runny. It's, like you said, it's not a syrup or a curd. It needs to be saucy so it can get into literally every nook and cranny. And that, mm. that's exactly what a crepe dessert is. If you don't have that, Lost. Not. So a little sugar goes in there. I've also added some Clement Gold juice to it. Sugar goes in. So the thing about why we why we preaching citrus right now, because it's a citrus festival. Ooh. So if you get any two of the combinations, if you're a rewards member, which we all are, 25% yeah, off. Wow. If you're not, we still we still love you, but you're gonna get 20% off. Yeah, man. So that that's gonna five percent because you're gonna want to make this on mass. You're going to want to make it. So okay, pan on for no, not yet, not yet. We're gonna fold our crepes into little triangles, okay? Because okay? that's a traditional shape. And you can overlap them because you really want to pack the pan full of these crepes. And that if just it, gives more areas for the sauce to creep into and soak into and a oh, creepy love crepe. It. Yeah. I mean, yes. Okay, cool. So the sauce is going to reduce. I added that sugar to it. It's going to do all the things it need to do. Fold it over. Uh, you want to give me a hand? Yeah. Grab a crepe. Grab, Grab a crepe. crepe. Fold it a little triangle. This dish I think is so amazing to make if you have guests over for brunch or for mm. breakfast. Because you can, remember traditionally Suzette's made a little bit of like a little bit of grand manier, just something to like just awaken your senses that early in the morning. But you don't have to use alcohol, but okay. you can. But you can. Because you can flambe the whole thing, Ooh. bring it to the, to the table, guests will be like, exactly, Ooh. Ooh. It is. It's, ah. it's one of those that it allows you to punch above your weight class in the kitchen. And we, we're all about that. When you're hosting people, you want a bit of show. Yes. Okay? You want a bit of entertainment Absolutely. value. Absolutely. Mm. So get that Beautiful. heat on now. Okay. Give this a little stirry stir. You want that sugar to dissolve. And you're going to see it's become a little thicker than what it is right now. But when that does happen, that's when you just pour it over your crepes. Okay. Again, we oh, want that sauce to really good. get in there. Soak, soak, soak. I've done the triangle, but I mean, you can totally just layer them up. For sure. Whack it into the oven. Let it start reducing. Everything starts bubbling. Everything's amazing. When it comes out, you it ask your friend G if you can scoop some ice cream. Spectacular. Oh, I'm ready for that. I am ready for that. Oh my goodness. You see what I mean? It's like a plate of sunshine. It really is amazing. I wish you could smell what our kitchen smells like right now because it's actually a little bit crazy. It smells so good. Look at that perfect scoop. Gee, have you been practicing? A little quenelle. Whoa. Not quite, but we... And you want this there. to be really hot and then you put that ice cream on this so it starts melting Ooh, immediately. And then you're going to get the mixture of that citrusy and then the creaminess of the ice cream. Absolutely ah. beautiful. And if you're looking for this recipe, of course, um, you can find it, woolworths.co.za and you can find this incredible special on all of the Clement Golds or the citrus that we are loving so much this morning. Let's pop you back there. Oh, um, that's beautiful. In store. At the moment, the ice cream is amazing, and I love the fact that, like you say, you're going to get that creaminess mixing with the mm, citrus mm. pop. 
This is a heady, beautiful, all-encompassing dessert that is literally making my mouth water so much that I can hardly talk. Absolutely exquisite. Find it. Woolworths.co.za. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> to help people take charge of their space and inspire them to express their uniqueness through paint, furniture and decor. I want a space that's inviting. It's just basically made for you. I'm open to experiment. Because I love change. I'm sure it's going to be very exciting. Old meeting new. Zanzi Room Rescue. Rescue my room. Please. This is ridiculous. No, this is just a total, total makeover. That's Mzanti Room Rescue. Thursdays on Afternoon Express from 6 to 7. Brought to you by Plascon and Rochester.
welcome back for one last time. We've been loving the show because we've been introduced to some very talented young people. We mm. definitely have. And if you're wondering, where is Raul? Well, he is coming to you live from Weinberg Boys High School. Yes, thank you so much, team. What a great time you've had out here at Weinberg Boys High School. And I'm out here with the boys one last time to send us home with their final performance for this morning. And this one is entitled Good Night, Sweetheart, and it is by Jay Hudson. Enjoy. <laughs> you from Wagner Boys. Thank you so much for joining us from Zanzi. I hope you enjoyed that and don't forget to head over to Cricket, of course, the 3rd to the 6th of August, right here at Clegg Hall, Little Shop of Horrors. It's something you do not want to miss out. From you gents, let me give you a big round of applause from Expresso. Thank you so much for having us this morning. You all were exceptional. <laughs> Oh, look at that. Did you just I just do peeled some myself a, a, a Clement Gold. I try to peel it without breaking the skin uh, in millions of You did a good job. Goes. Do you know how difficult it's been? I haven't been allowed to eat any of this oh, magic yeah? that we've created looks because now it looks so amazing. So we're going to eat some of that. But thank you so much to everyone today. You're going to help us end done. on a spectacular note this morning. Our protection, you got your protection safety goggles on. Don't forget, tomorrow, Motswedding FM, they report live from our studio. Woo! And it's going to be fire. That's uh, how you flambe your way into a clean freighter. Guys, thank you yes. so much for joining us this morning. Never forget how much we love and appreciate you. Thank you so much to the Weinberg boys um, in all their guises, from the rugby team to everyone involved. You've been amazing today. We'll see you tomorrow. Adios. When something's on your mind, but words don't come so easy, think of all the other ways to say it. Made with love by Clover. Uh, never feel.